time for Cigar Talk, the fastest growing cigar show in the nation. Welcome back to Cigar Talk. I'm your host, Rob Jones. We've got Brian Falconer, co-host of Cigar Talk here at The Leaf. How you doing, bro? Hey, man, we're doing good tonight, I mean, bro. look we're around. Good. We're Woo. at The Leaf. Yes, sir. And I mean, I don't know about you, but I mean, yeah. dude, this is the home away from home. Oh, most definitely, man. And, and I, I, I'm going to go ahead and preface right now. Oh, my God. Here we go. We've had a weather change oh, in yes. this area, and so my nose is twitchy. Do you get that? I definitely got it after all that wind. Oh, man. Night. Dude, last night, I went to bed at 7.30 because it rolled into town, and I mean, I just felt like shit. Got you. And, dude, I went to bed at 7.30. I woke up at 10.30 and thought I had COVID. <laughs> I thought I was going to die. And I was like, this is it. It's all over, folks. Yeah, but then I woke up this morning and I was like, I ain't got COVID. Yeah. I feel like a rock star. You know what I mean? Yeah, because I felt that way. I took me three Benadryl and a shot. Dude, I don't know how you take I take one Benadryl and I'm out Dude, like a stuck pig. I had to go to sleep. I had to get knocked out. I took three Benadryl and got me a shot of Wiffle Reserve. Yeah. Five to ten minutes later, I know I laid down and I remember waking up this morning. Ooh. Refreshed, able to breathe. Yeah, I was like, ah, oh, dude. So going good, in man. to the weekend n- thinking that you're sick is not fun. So not at all, not at all. Especially not a three day weekend, right? <laughs> <laughs> you give me a three day weekend and I walk into it sick. Oh, uh, we have a problem. We have a problem. Yeah, nobody's going to like me. Go back to a two way. Oh, oh, dude. But it, I felt better this morning, and I realized it was just allergy. So I'm good. How, and I can see you. Yeah, I feel a lot better. I had a long day, but the weather here sucks. You know, I think it was in the low 40s yeah. and the wind was blowing about 30. Dude, I hate days like that. You know what I mean? I know the wind was blowing hard. I had to take my wife somewhere today in the truck. Uh, and it pushed me across oh, dude, the highway. Yeah. And I was like. I drove over to Sweetwater today. I had to go check on a couple of things. Uh-huh. And, dude, driving over there sucked. Oh. It was just like a beat down. Oh, yep. So. <laughs> The more I turned left, the more it pushed me right. I was like, hey, so let's here. tell everybody what we're smoking today. I'm going to go first. I'm smoking the Arturo Fuente Chateau, and it's the Maduro. And this is, I believe, the Petite Corona, or it's a really damn small Robusto. <laughs> you pick, people. Anyway, what are you smoking, bro? Man, I'm smoking the Filthy Hooligans Black Market. I see. Are you, how are you liking that? I'm loving it. Do you really? I know you don't like candela. I don't. I, know, I, I don't. Know, In fact, I gave mine away. Yeah, you, I saw you. I gave it to me. <laughs> <But, yeah. laughs> Folks, whenever I gave it away, he was like, "Hey, is that yours?" yours? <laughs> like, wait a minute. You sure? He's like, "No, yours is still in the lock." I'm like, "Okay, I'm good. I'm good." So we had a special guy that does a badass mobile lounge. It's called Castillo Mobile Lounge. Have you seen it on Instagram? Anyway, the dude sent a couple of coffee mugs. Oh. He sent some coffee beans. Oh. And that's where you got the wonderlust. Oh, thank you. Oh. I had I- Now, let me ask you this. When someone tells you that somebody sends you a wonderlust, you're like I was I was ecstatic. Then the first thing came to my mind, hold up. What'd you do for it? Yeah. <laughs> or, or, or are we going to jail for it? <laughs> and he was like, no. Nah. So on a scale of like zero to 40, Damn, when 40? someone says this dude sent you a wonderlust, how excited do you get? I was about a 30. 30? Yeah. Good. Because that's about what I thought you would say. Okay. And that's why... He also sent you a black Irish, but that one didn't make it. It crashed and burned on arrival. Like, it landed. It kind of came in man, nah, t- nah, t- nah, tail nah, first. No, nah, no. Nah. Don't lie to me. Now, like wait a that, minute. Man. Wait a minute. How about that wonderlust? You trying to take me back to the wonderlust? <laughs> <laughs> Get me off of No. What, ha- what really happened to the black Irish? It looked like someone had, like, damaged our package. And, I mean, when I opened it up, that sucker was, like, busted in half. I took pictures. You didn't show me the pictures, though. I, no evidence. <laughs> I'm going with it may have gotten smoked. <laughs> <laughs> you know I would never. Come on now. Everybody that listens to this show and watches this show know that you will. Never is not in that conversation. Okay. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> 
It was damaged. I mean, it was was, after. (laughs) After. I mean, I'm not even gonna look at you now. (laughs) After (laughs) that sucker (laughs) looked like was good and got damaged. Someone burned it alive. (laughs) (laughs) That's what I'm trying trying to get out of you. You know what's funny is no, the guy who sent it to us, and his name's not uh, Corlito, okay, or whatever I said (laughs) earlier. Here he goes killing somebody else. Julio. <laughs> Where's Julio? Julio's over there. <laughs> so, you know, anyway, he sends a message that said, Hey, this is for you and this is for Brian. And I was like, Thanks, man. <laughs> Apparently, you don't know how it works. Thank you. <laughs> it goes to your address. I will not get it. I mean, but you like the Wonderlust. Oh, yeah. And I love the Black Irish, too. <laughs> I love the black. Eyes. I know. I didn't get one of those. I got something else. No, you got one of those. <laughs> I didn't. No, you got one, but it wasn't yours. <laughs> right, right. So, you know, hey, it's all funny. No, it games. ain't. No, it ain't funny games. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You know what? Zeka, when he sends stuff, he's like taking no chances. He's, he's Double, you triple, gotta have quadruple bolt rap. <laughs> he makes sure you're gonna have to work hard to get into it. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. What are you, are, he, you know what? We, you know, we got a new guy behind the camera tonight. It's not Larry. We got Tim Rickman. Tim Rickman's behind the camera. And a dude and has got a glass. <laughs> he's got to pour this out of his world. I, I was like, look how much booze Tim poured himself. And he's like, no, Larry got that for me. I'm like, mm, you're in for a good time. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, tell everybody uh, what we're drinking. We're drinking Buffalo the old Trace. Buffalo Trace. Cheers, bro. Yes, sir, cheers. I want to have my... Come on in there, Larry. Come on in there, Tim. We got to do it right. Got to do it right. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers cheers cheers, 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 cheers. All right, all right, all right, all right. So, anyway, that's, I I haven't smoked one of these uh, Chateau's Maduro's in a long, long time. Uh-huh. How is it tasting? You know, so far, I really haven't gotten anything out, out, of out of it, it. But, you know, we've been busy jacking around here. <laughs> so, I haven't, like, got to that point where I'm going to start enjoying it. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. When you're busy... Are we ever busy? Oh, well, I have to say this. Am I ever busy when we tape sick or talk? <laughs> you, on the other hand, like we started in a different area. You see that that bar back there? That's where we started. Yeah, and, and that didn't work. It didn't work, so he had to remove it. And I, I mean, knew, we, I, we, our we, producer we, for the night said, I said that about three minutes ago. <laughs> hey. What he should know, because me and this guy have been best friends for 37 years. Coming up on 38. Wow. And we, we've we lived together in two different cities. Uh-huh. And he knows no matter what anyone tells me, oh, yeah. I'm going to figure it out my way. On your and own. it's going to be the hard way sometimes. It'll be the easy way sometimes. But I'm always going to do it. Your My way. way. Mm-hmm. You and know, then, like Frank wind, Sinatra. It winds up being somebody else's way to say something before that he didn't hear. <laughs> Selective hearing. Doesn't, doesn't, it doesn't always pan out that way. I There's sometimes I find another way and I'm like, nope, that's how I want it. <laughs> and you know what? That's how that we're going to do it. it. Hey, look who just stopped in. We got J-Man. Hey, what's going on? He's got J-Man. the wrong glasses Hey, on. hey. He's got so, the wrong glasses on. Uh, when do you want? Matt was wondering when you wanted him. Uh, it'll probably be about 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Hey, guys, we have a sponsor called The Leaf. The Go Leaf. by and check them out. But also, we're here, we're dude, here. you guys don't know, this dude just pulls out all the stops oh, for his customers. Man. Tell the truth. And I mean, it doesn't even have to be cigars. Nope. I could be like, dude, my shoelace is broke. <laughs> He's like pulling thread out of a car seat, no. and within five minutes, no. I've got shoelaces. No, you said joke. You said your glasses were broke. Boom. He pulled out rebar and fixed them. Right. <laughs> these, these are not my regular glasses, and I pulled out a pair that, you know, the old standby, yeah, yeah. and when I pulled it out, it looked like someone had got bored and just wrapped black tape around one of the arms. I wonder who. Yeah. It was terrible. It was terrible. <laughs> but anyway, so... He fixed them for me. Yeah. I can wear these until I get my lens replaced. Place, yeah. And did I tell you why I lost my lens? Yeah, you told me. The dog <sighs> pooping. No, no. 
The dude's shitting in the house. This was sick. Dude, Poopy. he's 10 years old. He's never done that. He's 70 now then, man. I don't care. He's geriatric. I told my wife, I said, from now on, if that happens, he's going outside. And if he doesn't knock it off, I'm going to lock him in the laundry room. And that's where he'll live. And if he keeps going in there, I'll knock him in the head. I mean, and you know what? For all you Annabelle love. Anna, 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 Hannibal. Hannibal. <laughs> yeah. We don't want you eating up the <laughs> Hey, no, no, no. For, for real, for real. All, all the people who are concerned about my dog. It's well taken it's, care of. Yeah. It is. And I mean, he it's way overdue for me to beat the ever living dog. <laughs> and he won't. He won't because Ferb lives well. Oh. He lives well. It's <laughs> like having another kid. You know what I mean? It's like having another kid. And now, here's I don't want another kid. Well, you got one. <laughs> Ferb. Now, I, there's I, Jay. I, yeah, boom. <laughs> I told my daughter, I was like, I'm just waiting for him to die. What did she say? That's not very. I'm like, I knew you it. know what? Take him home. And she's like, no. <laughs> right. <laughs> he can't be on my lease. <laughs> you can't. You got to take him where you go or you mm-hmm. can't go anywhere. And now, because it dropped down in the 20s, he's like, I ain't going outside to shit today. (laughs) I'm going to do it in the house. (laughs) Yeah. And you know what? He knows. I mean, he knows. Oh, he knows that I don't play around with that. I got you. I got you. I got you. Anyway, what do you think about that uh, Buffalo Trace with that cigar? I don't don't know that I would like that cigar with any bourbon. Why? I'm not a Candela guy. I know that, but if you were, you'd understand how these do match. They pair together well, man. You're like, okay, I'm just still not a Candela, man, so don't even talk so about it. I hear did, you. did I show you my other stick I'm going to be bringing out probably after the break? No. The old Libijou 1922. I was like, you know what? That Because that's a pretty... Like, like medium plus. Mm-hmm. This is a medium, medium. rocket. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because it it's rockets solid. right by full. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So it takes it very far. So what have you been doing this week, man? Man, working, bro. Working. You know, COVID. you yeah. You had you had a busy week. Yeah. I I actually had a pretty busy week too, dude. Let me tell you something. I, and I know that you guys have to do this too, but you know when you work for any organization that is large scale there's training protocols that's correct well i missed a training thing that was due on december 31st and i had seen it on my to-do list and i was like yeah i'll do that when i get off vacation anyway just completely i just blew it Uh i didn't you know and i get a message from my boss like hey man you didn't do this training you need to knock that out and i'm thinking Okay, I saw it. It's on a certain subject, and uh, it'll take me maybe an hour. Yeah. It's a two-week course. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, dude, this is not like knock it out and be done. And Online it, two weeks? Yeah, and it won't let you like just keep going. Like When it gets to a certain point, it's like, okay, you're all done for the day. <laughs> wow yeah I'm like, no i couldn't know yeah that was a surprise yeah. i've never had one like that usually they're always like do it until you're done yeah. and i'll just stay on it until, until i'm done. done this yeah. one won't let you do it that way we are, we have a, only one course that is really a headache and that's the defensive driving course it is online and it's one of them that you can't speed through oh yeah 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 my wife just did one of those yeah you get to a certain point and you're like okay you get done with it too fast, and it tells you, okay, you got to wait before you go to the next section of it. Right. I'm like, why? It takes six hours to do this, yeah. and it makes you take six yeah, hours to do it. Yeah, they won't let you yeah. do it fast. Oh, and I'm like, man, I, I, I take pursuit driving with police but you department. Could do, but you could do like an hour here and an hour yeah. there. But what people do is they wait to the last day, <laughs> no. and then they're just stuck. No. See, we have set days that you have to have training. So you have on your day of training, you take all your training and get it done. And on this day, you only have that one course. And it's like, oh, come on. you got. I noticed more something else I could be doing right now. Like what? Anything. But taking this... <laughs> I could be sharpening the hoe. <laughs> Getting ready. <laughs> God, man. But anyway, you know, that's just the way it is. But this week, what hit my office more than anything was COVID. Oh, yeah. I had people come in. Oh, my so-and-so is in my house has it. 
Well, you know, hey, well, you need last to leave. week my daughter had it. This week my wife had it. Yeah. And we separated. She stayed in the guest yeah. bedroom. Don't worry, Tim. She cleaned it. Today. <laughs> but it was like, oh, dude, but I'll tell you one thing. So yesterday was the day she was like, I'm all well. Okay. And I was like, you test? She's like, yep. I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. So I don't know. Two hours later, we're both in the kitchen. She leans over. I kiss her. And then we go in the dining room and i see her test and it's not negative it's still positive and i'm like get away from me <laughs> so that's why not last you. night i was, I was worried, worried that i, I might you. have covid i, I was like you. and you know what i said when i went in the kitchen my wife was like i'm afraid you may have covid and i'm like yeah and i'm afraid you may gave it to me because <laughs> you're not gonna let her go i asked that. to get away i asked were you ready he's like nah but yeah, I had people come in, come to work. Oh, so and so in my house had it. You leave, they leave, they go get tested. I'm positive. I'm like, what? Right. Why did you come to work? <laughs> now I got other employees I got to worry about. Now I got to close my office down. It's just, it was just. So you are still much. on full alert. Yes. Yes. Uh, you know that's not the way most people are handling it now. Because, see, because the CDC I, says. If you're vaccinated, yeah. you don't even have to quarantine. Yeah, you don't have to quarantine now. But the point is, we deal with the public. Right, right, right. So I have people coming in all time of the day. That's like my shed. Nobody <laughs> wants to wear a mask. Right? And, Just like the shed. And they're coughing and sneezing. They got the little kids. and they's <laughs> No, nah, there ain't no kids over. allowed. Oh, God, man. It's just like, okay. So, and me, I, I try to clean as much as we can. But, you know, you still can't clean everything. And then they have the disinfecting person come in and Let they me spray tell you, it everywhere. Hey, we're gonna we're, in just a minute, guys. We're gonna take a little break and we're gonna bring on a coach that is pretty successful. Yeah, and he smokes cigars. In fact, he smokes a ton of celebration cigars because he <laughs> smokes a cigar after yeah, yeah, every we, game they uh-huh. win. But anyway, it's one of uh, what's his name? That dude that owns this place, Jay. Jay's friends, and he's in town, and we were like, you know what? Let's get him on the show. Mm-hmm. See what it's like to be that level of football coach. Of success. Right, because, you know, tomorrow we're going to see the Cowboys successful. Anyway. you want? It sounds like we should bet something. And I ain't betting nothing with nobody. How about? Nope. I'm not even looking at you. You don't gamble? I'm not gambling on this. Why? I'm, not, I'm just thankful that my team made it to the playoffs. I am. So are you saying you don't have any confidence I in them? I got confidence in them, but I'm not playing. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> if I was playing. Old man goes down again. Down. <laughs> if I was playing back when I could play, when I was playing, if I was playing, I'd ha- I'd bet. Even though that'd be wrong, but I'd bet. <laughs> but nah, mm-mm. I, I think, don't put my trust in I other people. I think they call that Pete Rose. Yeah, they do. They do. But I don't put my trust in other people like that. I don't. Because they will yeah, let you you're down. Not, you're not putting trust in them. Yes, you're gambling. And I'm, putting trust in, I'm putting trust in them that I'm going to get my money and yours. Mm. <laughs> not you get my money and keep yours. No. All right. Mm-mm. So I was going to bet you a wonderlust. What my wonder? <laughs> he gonna bet me my wonder that was that was sent to me and given to me that I haven't even had yet. How is that a bet? Answer that. How is that a bet? Sounds like a win-win yeah, for you. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the the, the black Irish. <laughs> oh, no. So mm-mm. anyway, uh, what I was gonna say is before we jump into our little break here, I wanted to ask you. You know. Are you aware that I think at the very first of the year we told we were joking, but we said we should have everybody make a top 10 list of who's going to die this year and send it to us. I wasn't joking. I wasn't in it. That was you. (laughs) Maybe that was me. (laughs) It was you. You know, maybe to that. (laughs) Just put it was you. Did you know we got one? You have got to be kidding. Well, Big Adam. I was going to say, knowing. The and light I'll tell you up what, crew. Dude, the, and, and I'll tell you what, I don't think he's got any right so far because we have been like dropping like yeah, flies. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, but his list is really good. How can a list of people that's going to die be really good? It's not a, it's not a list of they're going to die. It's <laughs> you guessing that they're probably going to die. 
Dude, that's what you're doing. <laughs> all right. Let me tell you who's on the list that I would be super sad. I don't know all of them, but this one. Who? Willie Nelson. Dude's, I think, 99. He's in his 90s. I, or 999. <laughs> I don't remember. But he's up there. That's because of the weed. <laughs> he's preserved. <laughs> so, but like Sidney Portier's gone. Yeah, man. Uh, some other dude. Uh, oh, Bob Saget. Saget, yep. Were you a Bob Saget fan? I was. I was. My kids were young enough in that time that they wanted to watch that show all the time, so I watched it. Well, you know he was a stand-up. Yeah, he was a stand-up Did comedian. Did you ever see a stand-up? I've seen a few, because I watch comedians. You know, he's not PG. No. no. In fact, some. And that's what blew people's minds. <laughs> right. You go from Full House to Red, Red Fox, Fox, and people are like, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> Here's the thing. He was real cool with Dave Chappelle. Uh huh. Uh huh. And he in sent, fact, he helped him put together the cornfield video. He owns. And he sent him a text two days before he passed. And Dave said he didn't look at the text. And then he passed. He went back and looked at. It, he said he felt so bad because he didn't get a chance to answer. Right. But dude, I'll tell you what. I was talking to my wife about this, and she's read up on the whole passing of Bob Saget. And apparently, he just started something new, new stand up. And he was out on tour. He, he was played. so pumped. He was texting all these people like, man, I feel 20 years long, younger yeah. and I'm on top of the world. This is where I want to be. Uh, Being out with the people again, you know, just going on and on. And boom, he went gone. out the way we all hope to go out. Yeah, on top. Well, I know not just that, but yourself. like he when they found on him, dude, he was laying in bed with his arm like this. I was I like, did not know dude that. was saying Pledge of Allegiance, and bam. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he said he was playing the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> I don't know if he was saying it or if he was listening to it, but that's what I'm guessing. He was in the indivisible part. Yes. <laughs> with Liberty. Oh. <laughs> Ain't no justice here. <laughs> so, no. Uh, hats off. That, you yeah, you know man. he was a big-time cigar smoker. Oh, yes, he was. You know, yes, he was. that's one of those dudes that he he was just – one of those people that really had friendships. He lived and enjoyed his yeah, life. Yeah, he really did. Lived and enjoyed his life. So anyway, hey, man, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, I think we're going to have a guy named Mike or Minch or Mitch Max. Max. We're going to have a dude that his name starts with an M. I promise you that. He murders everybody's name, man. Hey, man, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after a quick break. Hey, guys, thanks for hanging through the break. We have the letter M here with us. Tell them what your name is, Bob. All right. My name's uh, Matt Billings. Matt Billings. Yes, sir. Hey, so I know you and Jay, like, go way back. Yes. Like, how did you meet Jay? Uh, I met Jay in college, actually. We're uh, fraternity brothers. So I pledged him into our fraternity. So you were there first. Yeah. <laughs> and you brought him in. Yes. How bad was the hazing? Uh, we know haze. Hazing. I'm sorry. You know yeah, haze. yeah. You know what I mean. How was the fondling? Well, you don't really do that either. <laughs> oh, man, I don't know what school you went to, but uh, <laughs> down in Lubbock. No, no I'm just kidding. Uh, right. How how was Jay back in college? Because I mean, you know Jay now, and like yeah. Jay is like one of the best humans I know. Right, right. He uh, he was kind of the same in college, except for uh, during pledging, he didn't like me a whole lot. And at one point, he actually plotted to kill me. Wow. So, yeah, he uh, drew up statistics and everything in my house and all of that and had my class schedule down and everything. So he really thought it through. Wow. <laughs> but And I'll say that, Jay, Jay's a planner, so that's always a, a thing. That's true, for sure. So, but no, I mean, dude, like, Jay runs the leaf a certain way, and that way is because that's who he is. Exactly. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. I, I when I say I don't know a nicer guy, I'm 100% being true. Oh, for sure. Like, he makes me feel almost guilty for how I am, 
but then I don't give a shit. So, <laughs> uh, but no, that, that dude, like when I, he inspires you to be a better guy. Right. Most definitely. And so, you know, so you got out of college and then you ran off and decided to coach football. Yes. <laughs> How was that? It's good. I've been uh, coaching for 14 years. and uh, At the same place? No, five years at the current school that I'm at. Okay. Are you yeah. allowed to say where that is? Uh, probably not. Okay. But... <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. We're, you don't know where I'm going to take you, so that's right, probably right, a good right. move. <laughs> so what level are you coaching? Uh, 4A. 4A. 4A Division One. We actually played in the, uh, the state semifinals this year. Nice. Yeah, it was the uh, furthest that our program's gone in the school's history. So, wow. Yeah. So they're like, hey, we're going to let you stick around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, what do you coach? I coach uh, defensive tackles. Okay. Yeah. So, like, do you have, like, big dudes, strong dudes, or fast dudes? Uh, I had the two biggest, strongest guys on the team. <laughs> wow. It made my job a whole lot easier. I didn't have to do a whole Seniors? lot. Seniors? Yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so now what are you going to do? Uh, I've got a good group of younger guys coming up that are also pretty good size. They're not, you know, exactly the same as what I'm having graduate, but, you know, we'll get there. For yeah. Sure. Well, I mean, the thing about it is usually when you're – and I'm not any kind of a coach at all, but I would think that even though they're not the biggest and strongest – they have certain skills that the other guys might not have had that you can tweak and, you know, have them another advantage in a different way. Yeah, most definitely. These guys that I have coming up are going to be a lot faster, so they're going to be able to maneuver around a lot quicker than the uh, guys that I had. Because my, my guys that are about to graduate were both, you they're know. They're hole pluggers. Yeah, 6'3", 270, 280-pound guys. So, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that we when I was a kid, dude, like a, a defensive lineman weighed like 210. Exactly. Yeah. And now they're just massive. Yeah. It's crazy. We were watching some uh, state uh, ball last year when it was down at the uh, Cowboy Stadium. Right. Dude, they had some players that were like six foot four, 305. Yeah. Running down the field. And I'm like, holy crap, high school. Yeah, there's some freak athletes now in high school football for sure. That's somebody like messing with jeans and shit. <laughs> so, so how often do you get to smoke a cigar being a football coach? Uh, pretty often, actually. I've got a couple of humidors at the house, and there's a local shop in uh, Wichita Falls where I live. So, what's the name of that shop? Uh, GNR. Okay, because uh, Larry's gone by there a yeah, lot when he's yeah. up there. He says it's a good bar. It is. It I is. mean, it's like everybody knows everybody, and if you don't know, then they're going to give you BS <laughs> like a good bar should. Yeah, exactly. And so how long have you been hanging out over there? Uh, all five years? Yeah, all five years. Uh, actually, when I went on my first date with my wife before we got married and all of that, uh, we went there as part of our first date. And nice. she, she had never been to a cigar shop, and she didn't really want to go, but she was like, well, you know. Does she Since, smoke cigars? No, she oh, doesn't. Okay. She doesn't. That's but. always a good thing. <laughs> People are like, wouldn't it be cool if your wife smoked? And I'm like, I can barely afford smoking what I afford. Exactly. So, you know, yeah. and I don't want to share, as Bryant could tell you. So anyway, uh, where, do you, where do you go from where you are now? I mean, are you hoping to stick around at that school and just stay there? Or are you want to move up? Or are you want to go to a whole different program eventually? Well, uh, I've already been a head coach in the past. I was a head football coach for three years previously, and that was at the uh, smaller level, at the 1A level. So, you know, I could eventually see myself being a head coach again, but right now I'm fine being with a big school, being as part of a big program. Plus, we're supposed to open up two new high schools within, like, the next three or four years. So, right. yeah, my wife's from the area, and she wants to stick around. And we've got our first kid on the way at the end of April, so – you know. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. So what got you into cigar smoking back originally? Uh, what's funny is in high school, me and a bunch of my buddies got into uh, mafia movies. And of course, in the mob movies, everyone smokes cigars. So we were like, you got to be like the guys in the mob movies. So we all started smoking cigars and would hang out. Now, like, how old were you then? 16. Wow. <laughs> wow. You go way back. Yeah. So, for sure. like, do you remember what your first cigars were? Oh, uh, it was probably something cheap, honestly. I mean, do you remember where you got them? 
Uh, I probably had a buddy of mine that was a senior go buy them for nice. me. So. Yeah, because, you know, I didn't smoke cigars back in those days. I didn't start smoking cigars until I was in my 40s. Right. And so I can't imagine, like, you didn't know. I didn't know shit. I know you didn't <laughs> know shit. You were just like, let's smoke cigars. Yeah, exactly. Very so. cool, man. So... Where are you wanting to be career-wise in, say, 10 years? Let's see. I'll be 50 in 10 years. So the the way that it worked out, I uh, I went to college for like seven and a half years. I was on the, uh, the extra long plan. Right. Yeah. So when I got into coaching, I was 25, and we have a certain amount of time where you can retire. So I'll be able to retire at 51. So I'll be close to retirement already in 10 years. Wow. So, like, you took the long way. I did the short program. When I went to Texas Tech, I was in and out of there in one semester. Oh. <laughs> it was a hell of a semester, too. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, talking about Texas Tech, I've actually got one of my old uh, my old high school teammates was the interim head coach for the Texas Tech mm-hmm. football game. Or uh, football team this year. Oh, really? Yeah, Sonny Cumbie. I remember when that happened. It was, you know, I'm not a huge texas tech football fan and right. it's not because i don't want to be it's because they don't want anyone to be a fan <laughs> you know what i mean it's like if you just for a second if you think about being a tech fan they kick you in the balls because <laughs> they don't they they don't win they hype right they're they're like the dallas cowboys in a lot of ways are you a Dallas Cowboy fan? No, I'm not. Really? Not at all. <laughs> really? So who are you a fan of in the pros? Uh, in the pros, I have two teams that I root for. My main team is the uh, Baltimore Ravens. Okay. And then uh, my underdog team, who are terrible, is the Detroit Lions. Wow. Yeah. Those really, I mean, record-wise, <laughs> neither one of those teams were that good. No, they weren't Baltimore great this year. has a lot of talent, but they just didn't put it together this year. The Cowboys, and I'm a Cowboys fan, I'm just not a nut job. Right. Like You're a realist then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, big time. And, like, I didn't even watch the last game because mm-hmm. it was like there's zero benefit of winning or losing this game. Right. And, first of all, I was like, me, I don't think you should have all your starters in going into the playoffs. But, I mean, because this is a 17-game season. Yeah. 16 games, eh, you want to keep them, you know, like on a roll. But at 17 games, that's a lot of games. Yeah, definitely. We ended up playing 15 games this year. That's we, a lot. We were lucky to not have a lot of injuries to key players, so that's why we were able to make it so far. Yeah. And so, anyway, with the Cowboys at the beginning of the season, they they completely blew away my prediction. Right. I had predicted them to go nine and eight, and they ended up like six and four. Yeah. So, no, not six and four, 12 and four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they had a good record. But if you watched them play, they did not kick ass like the last five or six games they won. They came out and like looked trashed. You know what I mean? And it was like. (laughs) You're not going to do shit in the playoffs if you think you're going to come out and win and not play as a whole unit. Right, for sure. I mean, if if you got like a quarter of the team playing good and the rest not, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You can't sprinkle in a few good guys. Yeah, we had times like that this year actually during our season, and it would be some guys would play really well and then have off games and – like I said, the guys that I coached in my uh, my position spot, when they would have off games, we'd give up more points than we should have because we were holding people to, like, 14 points in most games. And then my two guys would have an off game, and then, you know, we'd give up 20-something or maybe 30 points. So. so did you play high school ball? Yeah. And what did you play? I played linebacker. Okay, cool. cool. Yeah, I, yeah. I played linebacker until I got moved to defensive end. And that was the greatest position on the team. (laughs) You had one mission. You didn't really have to know anything except kill that dude. Exactly. We uh, we actually sent a kid to uh, TCU last year to uh, nice to be a defensive in there. So very nice. We also have a running back that's at TCU as well, and our current running back, who's a junior, he's got about seven or eight Division one offers right now as well. Damn! Wow. Yeah. (laughs) Anybody going to Tech? 
Uh, they not currently, but they did offer one of our wide receivers this year. So he's a junior. He may end up there next year. It's hard to tell. You, yeah, and you know with tech like right now the changes that they're going through. I mean, you don't know if that's a good choice or not. Exactly. My deal with Tech is uh, I was a big Mike Leach fan. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Because, you know, <laughs> he brought it, and that was the most excited we ever were, the closest we ever got. I mean, we were in number two position one year yeah. for a little while. And then we got our asses kicked by Ohio State. Right. Like 66 to 24, some bullshit like that. But anyway, yeah, Leach. I mean, Texas Tech pull- – politics are the worst that's why they can't get a coach and keep a coach well and i remember after the leech situation uh where i was working at at the time uh one of our one of our coaches his son was going to school at mcmurray and it was when mcmurray had just hired how mummy to be the head coach and how mummy uh is who like gave leech his his beginnings or whatever and so, then, and then, how about that douchebag that's a coach down for Texas for the basketball team, <laughs> dude? He takes them all the way to the dance and then takes the big check down in Texas. Yeah, I mean that's not surprising though. No, it's not. <laughs> but I mean that tells you that. Well, how come Tech didn't pony up? You know what I mean? Yeah. You when you make it to the dance, you pony up whatever it takes. Exactly. And uh, the deal with Leach, though, we're on the phone, right? We get on a phone call, and we're talking to Hal Mummy, and we're like, well, what's going on, Hal? What do you think about McMurray? And he goes, I'm not worrying about that right now. I'm on a, I'm on a beach in Key West uh, drinking margaritas with Mike Leach right now. And we were like, wait, what? So we're talking to Leach, and we're talking to Mummy, and Leach is just like, oh, yeah, it was BS how they did me, blah, blah, blah. But I don't care. I'll go someplace else and make a whole bunch of money. Dude, he did, too. <laughs> I mean, I think he went to, like, Washington State yeah, yeah. and turned that program around. And now he's somewhere else, isn't he? Where, he is he at, somewhere uh, like, he's at Mississippi State right yeah, now. Yeah, that's right. And, dude, Mississippi State and Ole Miss, that's a hell of a you know battle going on. Well, and uh, you mentioned the Ole Miss. Uh, Lane Kiffin's the head coach there. And, really? Yeah. Lane I did not Kiffin, know that. Yeah, he's been there for two years now. And I I coach defense, but I was an offensive guy for a long time. And I think Lane Kiffin's a really good offense coordinator. He's got a great offensive mind. So I like to give this guy on our coaching staff hell about it because he hates Lane Kiffin. Uh, his family played at Tennessee and all of this stuff, and you know what happened. Now, wasn't Kiffin like the head coach of the Raiders or somebody uh, and got fired? Yeah, he, he's gotten fired a couple of times, but this guy I work with just hates him, despises him, so I always bring I him I don't up know to nothing him. about him, so, you know. <laughs> but, you know, having Leach and Kiffin going against each other down there, that should be fun. Yeah, yeah, and uh, – the thing with Leach, though, being at Mississippi State that was kind of cool, you were talking about Tech, is uh, Texas Tech and Mississippi State played each other in a bowl game this year. Oh, really? Yeah, and Texas Tech ended up winning like 28-7. to seven. Yeah. 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 So we were talking about that because, like I said, my classmate, was he played football at Tech and then became a coach there. That's cool. So he ended up beating him. So I said, you know, the student beat the master in that case or whatever. Right. So what did you think about Cliff Kingsbury? Uh, Cliff Kingsbury, I've actually hung out with Cliff before. Yeah. So, and he's a good guy. I think it's hilarious that, uh, they have this deal about how he's such a good looking dude and everything. Everyone loves Cliff Kingsbury and they always talk about that in football and everything like that, but he was a good dude. Well, you know, I thought it was hilarious basically that tech fired him and he gets a job somewhere else. And are you going to hand me this? Oh, thank you, sir. (laughs) I uh, thought it was funny that he got fired and then he got another coaching gig. And then before he went to that gig, he was the head coach of the Cardinals. Yeah. And it was like, I didn't think he was ready for that. But, you know, what do I know? Well, I mean, he's doing a great job there. We were uh, we were having one of our conversations in our coach's office and they were saying, <laughs> oh, you know, Kingsbury's going to take the OU job. He's going to be the head coach at OU. I said, why do you want to be the head coach at OU? <laughs> When you're with uh, with the Cardinals right now winning. Right. And, I mean, I don't know, but 
the money seems like way higher where he's at versus now. But when you get into those schools like OU, that's money. Yeah, they pay pretty well. I know uh, Lincoln Riley left there to go to USC, and uh, they, like, paid for his house. Like, he was building a house in Oklahoma, and they were like, hey, we'll pay to finish it, and then we'll build you a house out here in California. So, I mean. <laughs> that's more money than I have. Yeah, way more money than I'll ever have, most likely. Yeah. So, how often do you come down here and hang out with old Jay? Um, a couple of times a year. I stay busy. Like, with football, we started football in August, and then we played until mid-December. And so, then when do y'all crank back up? Uh, we'll start up uh, probably around March is when we'll start working spring stuff. And then when the season's going, like, how much time do coaches at that level, like, are y'all there from, like, you know, five in the morning till 10 o'clock at night? Uh, we usually, we work seven days a week during football season. And I'd say we probably put in about 90 hours a week. So it's, you get to work in regular time, like seven o'clock in the morning. And then we have practice and everything. And we finish up around like 830 usually. So, yeah. So by the time you get home and eat, it's time to go back to bed. Exactly. It's, yeah, you know, and that's something that, like, I think a lot of sports fans, like, they want to say, oh, I would love to coach. I would not want to coach because I think that it, the amount of time it takes because you're dealing with however many people are on your roster and everybody has a job to make sure that they're getting the best out of them. They're teaching them what they don't know and making them better at what they do. Dude, that's an all-day, everyday job. Yeah, most definitely. I think uh, from freshman level up to our varsity team, we had like 94 kids or something like that. Wow. <laughs> so, And then in my position spot, I think I started the season out with like 14 kids. So, I mean, you got to work with those 14 kids a lot. <laughs> right. And, I mean, like you get 14, are there like 12 really good ones and two you're like, yeah, I'd like to get rid of those two, but they won't let me. Uh, that usually happens with anything, though, really. Right, in right, right. Yeah. So you have the kids that are in the cream of the crop, then you have kind of the middle, and then you have the kids that are out there playing for fun and stuff like that. But and then, And then do you look at it as even the two that are, you know, here – to be on the team, how do I make those guys better so when they do get called up in an emergency, they are effective? I mean, you just have to coach everyone the same, obviously. So you can't go, oh, I'll work these guys harder because they're my better guys. I just try and treat them all the same no matter what. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Cool. So. Well, hey, man, thanks for taking the time to swing by. And uh, you've oh. never even heard of Cigar Talk. And next thing you know, he's on the show. <laughs> So, uh, thanks for coming on, man, and uh, hopefully we'll see you around sometime, bro. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. M. Welcome back to Cigar Talk. We just had the big M on the show. Yes, happy sir. birthday. I forgot to tell him happy birthday. He's 40 years old now. Yeah, man, I remember What 40. a young pup. <laughs> I remember 40. I, I don't. <laughs> I do. I wasn't that far gone. Yet. Really? No. I was on... I was on the other side of craziness at 40. I was still just <laughs> right down in it. Nah. Old Jeff Richardson and me down in Houston. Say it was a different world. Yeah, it was it was something. It was it was good times. It was the best of times. It was the, worst, it was the best of times. You say, you said there was no worse. There's no worst. <laughs> but no. Hey, Buffalo Trace. Yes, sir. Mm -mm -mm. So what do you think about recording at the Leaf? Hey, it's it's great being in the atmosphere. You know, I love I love recording at the shed because that's where we've been doing it all the time. So it's like that's home. But then to come here, you yeah, totally different. Totally different. It's it, a different it, atmosphere. It's a different feel, and it's a good one. Yeah, it's it really is. One. In fact. You know what I was thinking? I would like to do it again in the near future, uh -huh. but instead, like me sit there and you sit there where that chair is. Okay. That way, that is the background too, because that that's a great background. That's a great. I, I, and for you guys who don't know, that's the mural on the wall in the Havana room, uh -huh. and each one of these guys is a guy who used to hang out here, mm -hmm. and out of a tribute, they've had them. Put their portrait on the wall yeah. 
And all of these guys have passed except so for two. two. Yeah. You've got Bill, which is right. Whoop, whoop, right. That's Bill. And then there's Dr. Bill. Remember Dr. Bill? Yeah, man. Dr. Bill was cool, man. He was probably one of the nicest guys I've ever met. I loved him, man, because every time I saw him, he'd say, you, you staying out of trouble? Yes, sir. I'm staying out of trouble. And he always had something good to say. And I, me, I'm a shoes and socks man. I'm a dresser. And he always had a wild pair of socks on. Every time. Yeah. It didn't matter if he was in tennis shoes or hard bottoms. He had a wild pair of socks on. Man. I was going to say, he could be in slacks or he could he be in sweats. sweats. And he did have a wild pair of yeah. socks on. Always man. like bright yellow, neon green. Faces. <laughs> smiley face. It, it was always something. I, it, whenever I walked in and I saw him, I always looked down to see what socks he had on. And it was just, man, he was, he was a joy around this place, man. He really was, man. I miss him. I miss him. Yeah. I mean, there's certain brothers of the leaf oh, yeah. that, I mean, you just will never forget. Them. Nope. And uh, I'll never forget Dr. Bill. No, not at all. Dude, I'll tell you what you missed out on early on today. I, I know you had errands to run with the missus, uh-huh. uh, but hanging out with Bill and Ed, yeah. you know, that that is, the I mean, wisdom. I... I I posted on Facebook and I just said legends because yeah, that's who they are. Because I mean, when you're pushing seventy and seventy five, and have been in certain environments and come out successful, right? And are not stingy with that information. Will give you anything you need to understand where you are and where you can be. That's what I love about Ed because. He has a particular way of giving you information, and if you listen, you pick it up. But if you're playing around, you're missing. You know how he'll do? He just laugh at you and walk off. <laughs> he'll laugh at you like, yeah. He Let me tell you something. Walk so, off. so early on when we got here this morning, uh-huh. Larry was already sitting in his regular chair. <laughs> the Larry. The I Larry was sitting room. where Carlos is. Oh, you Julio, said his name right? <laughs> and anyway, I went up to get coffee. And I said hello to someone, and then when I came back, that person followed me. Oh, okay. And they sat down in the, the area. In the area. Uh-huh. And I said to him, I don't want you to think I'm being a dick. <laughs> but here it comes. <laughs> I just want you to know up front <laughs> that this whole area is reserved for a faculty yeah, meeting. For the faculty meeting. So when the old guys show mm-hmm. up. You're going to have to get up and get out. (laughs) And he said, oh, no problem. Uh So Bill comes in and sits down where Larry's sitting. Yeah. And we're talking. And then Ed shows up, and he's sitting in this chair. Uh And so I'm like, and so he scoots over one. Instead of two. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, the couch has three cushions. He moves over to the middle one. Just, and Ed sits down, and I'm wait, like. Wait, 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 wait. It's just like when you go in the restroom. Don't go to the rear on the right next to me. <laughs> There's two. <laughs> Calm down. There. I mean, give me some room, bro. Give me some room, Unless man. we're really good friends. And even if we're really good friends, <laughs> step off, pimpin. Step right. off. <laughs> so I was like. Who? <laughs> you know, I'm like, <laughs> give him some room, bro. <laughs> so Ed, Ed, first of all, Ed stands for a long time, yeah, and I'm like, does. Ed, sit down. Yeah. He sits down, and then I'm like, <laughs> you know, move. <laughs> and, and I'm like, Ed hasn't had that much affection in a long time. <laughs> Be careful. He's old. He's old. <laughs> so anyway, the dude never moves. Wow. And at one point, Ed, or uh, Bill is telling us a story that has to do, and you know Bill reads a lot of philosophy. Yes, he does. And he's telling us this comparison on today's world with a philosopher from way back. Uh-huh. And he tells us all this, and it's very interesting, and we listen anyway. Then we move on to a different subject. Mm -hmm. And the kid (laughs) says, hey, what would you say about technology and religion? And I was like, dude, if you're not 
paying attention as we go. You don't get to say, don't stop what him. did you say? Yeah, don't stop him. Let him keep going. And so he goes, no, I'm serious. And Bill goes, are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> you want me to repeat? Pete? <laughs> Listen, <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen. And then he's a professor, too. So that is his thing. If I'm giving you information, listen. Now, if you're listening and you have a question, fine. Yeah. But don't not listen and then chime in and go, what? What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Story's <laughs> over. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nap time, son. <laughs> Yo. Oh, man. It was a good time. And then, you know, Ed comes down here and he's got a bottle of uh george dickel 15 year wow. he blessed you yeah i mean when i got down there that bottle was gone was it <laughs> yeah it was gone it was gone to be fair it wasn't full when it got here uh, it, but it wasn't full at all when i got here <laughs> <laughs> well to be fair you did get here pretty late yeah i mean yeah. what time did you get here like noon yeah it was noon yeah, I mean, you can't expect. Yeah, I know. I understood. I was just amazed that everybody was still here when I got here. I pulled up. I was like, oh, they're here. Let me hurry up and get in there before somebody leaves. And it was just sitting down with Bill Steele. And he came over here because all of the area over there was taken up. And I sat where you're sitting now. And he came over here. And then you came. And then Larry came. And then the conversation started up again. Right. And then Ed came and sat. And I was like. These, and you know dudes. what? And you know what I figured out while we were sitting at this table? What's that? It's a lot easier to hear each other mm, here. You're closer, yeah. When you're like sitting where Larry normally sits, mm-hmm. and someone's sitting in that chair over there, mm-hmm. it's not always easy to deci- right. decipher what they're saying, especially when you have music playing and people talking. Hey, What's going Tim, on? can you bring that ball of uh, Buffalo Trace over here? <laughs> Say, I need a refill. <laughs> oh, Larry's got it. Larry's the, got it. The bartender has it. <laughs> yeah, he, he's, he's like, I'm to low, it. too. So, so hey, let's jump into our pick six of the week. Hey, no problem. I, I, I have a very good list. Mm. And uh, you know what? I, I won't say it's not the best that I've ever had. Okay. But it's it's good cigars. Okay. And, you know, that was something that I was talking to that young man about earlier when he was here. Uh-huh. And he was like, I may be wrong, but I really, really enjoy, like, the factory smokes. And I was like, yeah, you're wrong. <laughs> you're very, very wrong. And he was like, you know, but when you're... uh you know, no. doing some activity and, you know, it's not important that the cigar make it through. And I'm like, I don't no. smoke cigars like that. No, I want either. every cigar to be, to be good. good. No matter what. <laughs> no matter what the situation, I, I it has to be I don't want a, a cigar that's like, I can tolerate it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I want a cigar that, that I can enjoy. I mean, could do, that, that's like... I I'm, like that. Could you know, do. No, no, no. I, I'm like... I'd like to see the women you date. Oh, my <laughs> Apparently, I-, I can tolerate it is okay with you. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not going there with I mean, you, dude. I'm not going there with you, man. Because this, yeah, I mean, this is I'm a right, rabbit I'm hole. Right, I don't want to go over. down. I'm just going to tell you one thing. <laughs> oh, God. But to prove me wrong, he pulls out a picture of a girl he's dating. And I was like, okay, she has a pretty face, but she only has one leg. You know, I mean, <laughs> so I guess that'll do. <laughs> People need to understand who you are, man. You know, you cannot crack the door <laughs> with you. <laughs> Boom! Yes. <laughs> it, it, when <laughs> I leave it alone. If you don't know Rob, if you give him an opportunity, there is no if he'll take it. <laughs> it's how far he'll me, take let it. Let me tell you something that you don't know. Uh-oh. You act like and say it like I have to have an opportunity presented. No, you don't. Sometimes you I don't. just kick the door in. Yes, like when we first met. Right. <laughs> he didn't know me from Adam. He walked over. What's up, racist? <laughs> well, and the thing. And I looked, I'm like, what you know hell? what? Here, what the hell? And that's because <laughs> you didn't give me a door to crack open. So, you so just, I just you said, you own. know what? <laughs> Boom. <laughs> he made his own. And I'm sitting there looking like, who is it? What the? You don't know me? And then he goes back over there and sits where he was sitting. 
And then I, I, I paid attention to the conversation he was having with everyone else. I was like, oh, he's just an asshole all the time. That's just him. Okay, I can understand that then. <laughs> but it was just like, this dude don't know me. He don't know me at all. I, I, I You know what? I, I would like to ask you a question. Okay. But I'm afraid I can't. <sighs> Why not? Because, you know, I no. just can't. I'm not going to. If you say you can't I'm ask the question, you, I'm, 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 I'm going to let you. it go. I'm going to let it go. You, you know what? <laughs> if, if, if I'm doing you a solid, <laughs> I'm taking it. <laughs> I'm taking it. You know, some people are like, I, I really want to know. No, I don't want to know. Who got their hands behind my head? That's Jay. Oh. <laughs> I happened to look up and see these fingers behind me. I'm like, what Jay, was that? we were talking about the mural behind and what an honor it is for the shop to have those guys on the wall. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Because it was an honor and to a privilege know. to know those yes. guys in life. And that's yes. one of the reasons I love coming down here on Saturdays mm-hmm. because – I mean, look at the two old dudes we're hanging out with. You oh, never know when they're going to go. I mean, they could be on the list. I knew that list was going to come up again, man. I knew you was going to talk about it. Anybody you would put on no, the list? No, None. No, 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 None. No. I don't want to see anybody. Come. I didn't say you want to see them. So I don't even think like in that in that even realm. I don't even think in that realm. I love seeing people. I love seeing the people that I've met. I love seeing people that I don't know and meeting them the first time. Like, even you but <laughs> it's just like i can't think in that realm i can't i can't I, we know you can if you give me a list of people who are over 70 i'm like yeah let me let me see their medical records <laughs> what's the odds on this guy <laughs> what's the over under on this <laughs> right i mean are we pushing 75 or 80 so oh, man. oh i know one of them i believe was on the oh. list was Pete rose I can't see Pete Rose going early. He ain't going early. He's old. I mean, even now, I can't see him going yet. Pete Rose has been in a lot of stuff in his life. He's one of them that's going to make it to 99 hard. Hey, if you're 99 and you're hard, dude, share the secret. I'll open the door, folks. I'm share sorry. The I'm sorry, I opened that door. Hey, hey. I didn't even. Call me Wilbur. I opened that door. <laughs> Hey, before we jump in to the pick six, yes, sir. let's talk about our sponsors. Most definitely. We are blessed beyond uh, on the sponsors we have. Look down the show notes, and if you haven't signed up for the McAuliffe Madness, show notes, show notes. dude, the prizes are crazy, uh, and it's a fun thing to do. Yes. And they make it so simple. You just go through and pick. Tim, have you done your McAuliffe Madness yet? Yeah. Not yet. You better get your ass in gear. Because I want to see that. Now, you want to do that, but they're giving out prizes. Anybody can play. Yes, but except only, us. Only, no. <laughs> I'm going to play. But I'm just not going to win. win. Yeah. But if you're not an ambassador, you, you can just play, play for fun. Yes. But don't play for fun. Play to win. Yeah, join. Dude, become a member. Are you aware that Al McAuliffe is giving some of his cigars, cigars from his own his personal humidor? Stop. Like... He's 86. You know there's some goodies in there. No, no, no. I'm sorry. He's not 86. He's 80-something. He's not 86 He's yet. in his 80s. I think he's like 82, 84, but, I mean, dude gets around. In a vet. <laughs> Fast, quickly. Vet. <laughs> so, anyway. He's not playing with it. Hey, look. There goes Sam and Scott Fritz. Wow. Oh oh You've heard God. about them. Now you can see them. If you aren't on YouTube, you oh go by right God. now and you look, they walk by. <laughs> and then, and, I mean, dude, it was like stiff and stitch. <laughs> and so oh anyway, God. you know, I would, just, say, I, would, I, would, I would say I'm just kidding, but it's I'm amazing. not. But anyway. Uh, it's amazing. Dude, go it's by, amazing. become an ambassador, and then go do the McAuliffe Madness. Yes, sir. It's a fun thing to do. It is. And then also we have Case Elegance. Ah. Did you see who won the I don't want to know who won. Dude. I didn't win. No, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. I'm talking about the NFL have, picks. Mm-hmm. Sean O'Connor. No way. 
Sean because, O'Connor. Like you won. said, as long as he uh, made picks. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I, I talked to him one day and I was like, dude, you're in the lead. Yeah. I was like, I think you're going to win as long as you don't forget to make your picks <laughs> next week. And so anyway, he did end up ah, winning it all. That's cool. And man. Case Elegance gave him the flat black mm-hmm. military footlocker humidor and. They gave him three months of their cigar, cigar club. club. Mm-hmm. I mean, dude, that is a hell of a giveaway or a prize. And hats off to Sean. I'm glad it went to a good guy. Yeah. I mean, you know, it could have went to someone like Orlando. And then we would have been like, eh, we're not doing it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> they come to one one six six eleven sixty six, boom. But uh, no, uh, dude, the humidor looks oh, amazing. Man. That flat black kills it, and to know that it's a limited edition, edition. of three hundred, yes. they're not going to just keep making these no. because they're badass. It's like you get one, you're blessed. Sit on it, you're blessed. Use it. Don't abuse it Mm-mm. and never sell it. Never sell it. So hold on. Look to down it. the show notes show and you can go by and check out everything that Case Elegance offers. They've got the the green, the military the one flat green, have, which yes. is amazing. Yes. And then they also have the travel humidor. Mm-hmm. They have cutters. They have the lighters. lighters. They have everything. Yes, sir. Look down the show notes. Click on the link. Go by and see what they have. Support the people who yes. support us. Yes. And so then that also brings us up. To case, no, I already did case. Uh, yes. Tabernaro, let me, let me, I'm gonna get one more drink. Tabernaro. I'm gonna have one more drink. Tabanero. So let me say something Cigars. about Tabanero. I had a meeting with Yonko this week, uh-huh. and I don't, I don't know that Yonko understands the level of love I have for his cigars. You know what I mean? I understand. Like, he always says, thank you so much, Mm -hmm. you know, that I'm humbled. Thank you. And I'm like, no, no, no. 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 Mm -hmm. You don't understand. It's a different level, bro. When you come to the Havana room, Mm. do you know how many people are smoking Tabanero? 90%. And the people who haven't, I go in the humidor and And I buy buy one and give it to them. I'm like, dude, you got to try this stick because that's how good it is to me. (sighs) Tabernaros, you are the one to introduce them to me. I, it, it is a great stick, man. I haven't had one yet. Construction wise, that was an issue. Flavor, preach it. Preach I mean, it. flavor. Because let me tell you wise, something. Let me tell you the something. The entire every stick I've tasted from Tabernaro has hit the mark each time. And let me tell you something. So there's a guy up in Colorado, mm-hmm. and he's always sending me pictures of cigars that I should try. Mm-hmm. And when I get around to them, I do. Some of them I've already tried, and some of them hopefully I'll get to try. Uh But the dude ordered some Tabanero, and he smoked them and said they were good. Mm -hmm. Well, I talked to him about maybe a week ago, Uh and he goes, yeah, I'm not smoking the Tabanero. On a five-pack, like four of them blew up on me. And I was like, let me tell you something. I have smoked... 12 boxes of tabaneros. <laughs> and if I lying. haven't, and, and if it wasn't me directly smoking them, it was somebody in it the shed. shed. Mm-hmm. And in 12 boxes, I had one that the draw was semi tight, not too tight, but tighter than perfection. Mm-hmm. And that's what they have gotten me used to. Yeah. And so I that's was what like, you accepted. I was like, that's not the norm. Mm-mm. You know what I mean? Mm-mm. And I still smoked it. It wasn't like plugged, but it was one of those things where I was like, okay, you know, there's one out of 12 boxes. <laughs> and then so someone tells me they had four out of five that blow up. I don't know. You know what? I need, I, I I need told, evidence. I told Brian that. And, you know, Brian has yeah. been on Tabanero mm-hmm. almost as much as I have. Yeah. And he said, that dude's full of shit. <laughs> That's that's all there is to it's it. It's true. It's true. Because I have Look, never... the dynamic duo of Sam and Scott have left the oh building. Oh, God. He would not let that go, so, folks. Any, no, he I would not let, let, let that go. 
Which one's Moni and which one's Pony? <laughs> so anyway, uh, let's do our pick six. pick six. And guys, look down in the show notes. Show I went notes, by Tabanero's website yesterday, and I was like, dude, there's a ton of cigars that they have I haven't smoked yet. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Sam, who bought two handles of Old Forester. Uh-huh. Said he was going to bring up a bottle yesterday and today, and Larry has passed on the note, which I don't know if you can read that, and says, again, he did not bring the bourbon. So that's why Sam can suck it. Thank you. Anyway, we're going to get on with with our the show. Six. But no, you know what? Before we leave on Tabanero, okay. I looked, and they have a lot of cigars I haven't tried yet. Mm-hmm. And it's hard for me to get off from the Sun Growns and the Connecticut's because they're so good. I got you. It's like it's hard for me to move on. I got you. But I'm going to this year. You're going to take that ride. I did. And just so you guys know, Tabanero has decided that we're going to strengthen the partnership with Cigar Talk and Tabanero, and they have signed up. To be with us for the next, next 12 months. 12 and we're months. thankful for that. Almost definitely. And when you partner up with a guy that has the passion and the credibility oh, that the Yonko, Yonko does, yes. the guys over at McCalla, mm-hmm. they do, the guys over at Case yes. Elegance. And then, I mean, Jay, Jay. <laughs> dude, you mean, like, dude, if you want cigars, look in the show notes, shut call up, the up, number, up, and he will set you up with anything that we talk about. Almost definitely. He you know will. what I mean? And we'll make it nice for you. Like you may have a present there. And because if you and if you're a Patreon member, uh, tell him you're a Patreon member. He gives you ten percent off. Yes. So or free shipping. Or free shipping. One of the two. Mm-hmm. I don't remember which, but it's they the give you shipping. something. Yeah, the free shipping, shipping to all Patreon members. And let's go ahead and say thank you to all of our Patreon. Oh, members. most definitely, man. I mean, we have a community <sighs> like no other. <laughs> and, Tim's yeah. raising the hand. Me. And, and, and I don't <laughs> even know if you know this. But one of our Discord guys got jerked around by his current employer at the time and a future employer coming up. And the whole scenario put the dude out of work for like six weeks. You know what I mean? No money coming in. Yeah, Dude, do you know I sent private messages to a majority of the Discord brothers and said, hey, man, if we can help this guy out, let's do it. And if we can't, I understand. No Mm -hmm. worries if you can't. And do you know that I sent him $676? That's a blessing, man. And that's that community. That is the community. community. If you're not part of our Discord server, don't come in thinking we're going to send you $600, okay? But... You're going to be part of a community that cares for one another. Yes. That you build a bond with over simple things. Yes. It might be the cigars. It might be the bourbon. It might be just conversation. Yep. What's going on? Mm-hmm. Do we get to know those people, people all over yes. the, world. the world? And if so, if you're not a member, look down. I'll, I don't always put the Discord server in the show notes, but I will this week. You should join the Discord server. And we've had several people join this week. Good. And it's just a special community that is a blessing to be a part of. And it's not one of those communities that's dead either. Oh, Because no. they are live. I have to turn my phone off at work because it's forever going off with the discord well I'm like you and know this is not just one or two days this is every day you know jack yeah every seven days a week yes and the funny thing is like when i get on at 6 30 in the morning seven dude they've been talking for two hours <laughs> and i'm like z lives in california, california he's so it's way early in the morning yeah, yeah. But, you know, I always read back through the conversations and, you know, just getting to know people where they are right now. Mm-hmm. What's going what on in their is. life? Yes, what that level and is. And I enjoy all things about people. And anyway, 
If you want to join the Discord server, I'll, I'll have a show notes show link notes, down notes, in the bottom. Notes. So go by, check it out, join up. And if you're easily offended, you don't probably join. not your thing. <laughs> don't join. I'm telling you not, don't join. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, it gets live. Yeah. It, it gets live. It's rough. Yes, sir. Sometimes. On everybody. Right. Me so. and Rob both. <laughs> So anyway, uh, let's jump into the pick six yes, before sir. we go. Who's going first? I'll let you go first. Most definitely. Okay. My number three for the week was the Monte Cristo Epic Blue Toro. I I I I don't think I've ever smoked that. You cigar. haven't. You haven't. Because it said Monte Cristo. That's why. Well, you, you know, I, that, that, <laughs> let me but, let me tell you something. Earlier this week, I was here at the Leaf, and a woman come in. And she was buying her husband some cigars uh-huh. for his, like, 75th birthday. Okay. And being the good Samaritan that I am, I was like, ma'am, let me help you out. Because she didn't know anything about cigars. Gotcha. And anyway, I took her in a humidor, and I started showing her some cigars that I thought, you know, 75 years old. I asked what he smoked. And he smoked some, like, darker Maduros and some different sticks. And so... Her brother-in-law sent a list uh-huh. of like what he thought he would like. He would like, uh-huh. and it was Monte Cristo, Romeo and Julieta, and uh, Macanudo, and Cohiba, and I was like, uh, all of those. <laughs> let me let me help you. Let me get your guy some real sticks. Mm, go down okay? to boutique. Yeah. Aisle. So, of course, a Monte Cristo. Yeah. I mean, not a Monte Cristo, a Tabanero. Tabanero. I was like that, and then I got her a medallia mm. i was like good those choice. two sticks right yeah, there is gonna be a good birthday good choice and then we went back down and we picked out the romeo and julieta the only one that i like and that is the nicaraguan which is the blue band yeah. i like that stick okay. and that was good for her and so but it, you know what i love helping people with cigars because you're giving your knowledge you give it, especially when you hit somebody that doesn't know, because she could have came in and just went off that list and got things. But you're giving them, you're giving her well, something and, to give and, her and, husband and, and, and that I, is, and I said, a true gift. Does your brother-in-law smoke cigars? And she's <laughs> well, like, just, no. Yeah, he's just pulling like, the list. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he probably Googled cigars, yeah, and, that's and what that he was said. the top ones that came yeah, up. Yeah. So you know, what's number two? Number two, I smoked my Arganosa leaf. Anniversary, anniversary. Is that the silver? Yes, with the. How, with I have not long. smoked mine yet. Ah. <clears throat> You're gonna enjoy it. Okay. You're gonna enjoy it. Okay. You're gonna enjoy it. And number one for me this week, and it's number one for a reason, was the Placencio 149 Conseca. Oh wow! I still have not smoked that cigar. I smoked mine. It's a you know. How long have we had those? We've had those now for probably three or four three, weeks. Four yeah. No, almost a month. Yeah, a little okay. over a month. And you know, you I'm don't not, hold I don't sticks. normally <laughs> you hold, hold cigars. Sticks. No, you don't. But the humidor has been at a higher level than usual. <laughs> and the thing about it is, everything in there is good. Yes. And so it's been like... I don't have to smoke that. I got you. I'll let that sit a while. I got you. And because it was shipped from, you know, California. California. <laughs> I'm going to let it rest a little longer. He said <clears throat> California. That's what Orlando calls it. <laughs> hey, hey, hats off to Orlando. He's now in the business of buying a house. Mm-hmm. Here's to Orlando. Good luck, brother. I just made that trip. <laughs> and in today's market, whew. And, you know, buying a house is a pain in the ass. Oh, it is. It it's is. like, you know what? How about this? Make it like buying a car. You know what I mean? Do we have to do all that paperwork? <laughs> it is. a Man, my wife was tripped. She said, we got to sign off. I said, yeah. Everyone I signed and I handed you, you got to sign with me. She got tired. I was like, yeah, all of it, it's legal. You did that. Yes. That's not how we did it. How did you all do it? I did all the signing. No. Both our names on there. She no, 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 no. Just mine. No, both our names on there. 
That's the difference between me and you. Because if I'm you're on, a husband and I'm a king. <laughs> if I'm on somebody's list and I leave, I don't want her to have a problem. <laughs> I don't want her to have a problem. Just keep on moving. <laughs> I guess that's a good way to do it. Yeah. If I'm up, if I made somebody's list and I don't make it, she's Here, all right. Here's the thing, though. Like I, I kid. I'm the I king, know. but Miss B, it's, she's the queen. We know. So whatever. <laughs> I have is hers. Oh, we know. We and know. she probably doesn't want a lot of it. <laughs> She's like, I don't want that. <laughs> she anyway, don't want nothing in the shed. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let, me, let me pull up my list of the top three, and gotcha. I've got them in order from okay. three to one. Number three this week, and I mean, for me, this is one of my favorite sticks. Okay. I don't get it very often, but it was also a gift from Zayko okay. when he came by. Did you know he came by? Yeah, I know he came by. So, you know, he didn't have a lot of time. Nope. He parked his truck out somewhere, and he Ubered over here. Okay. And while we were here, I bought him some nice That's sticks, it. and I gave him some gifts that I had. Okay. And so he gave me, I believe it was a five and a half by 46 Fausto Tatawahe. Ooh. And I I never had that Vitola before. Mm-hmm. And dude, I love it in every Vitola mm-hmm. I've smoked it in, but that Vitola Hit was it. like close to what the Medallia is. Mm. And the Fausto is a fantastic blend. It is. It smokes great. It is very rich. A lot of like not just earthiness but like different degrees uh, of earthiness. You know what I mean? Like like, <laughs> like when you get into that, like, you know, this is that potting soil richness. <laughs> so, you know, I dig that. It's wild to hear him say things like that because <laughs> we know but how big of a butthole you are. To, see, to hear you go refined. <laughs> I don't do refined very often. No. <laughs> you know what? I, I got a message from one of the uh, people that's going to TPE, uh-huh. and they were like, hey, you know, people dress up here. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you showed up in shorts and flip-flops. <laughs> I said, thanks. Yeah, I'm still going to be me. I know I normally wear T-shirts, shorts, and flip-flops, uh-huh. but I know how to, you know, step, step it, up it up a, a notch. notch. Yep. And they said... You should step it up two notches. <laughs> and I was like, I was gonna. So, you know what? I'm excited about TPE. Okay. We'll have one more show before, and then we'll go to TPE. Tim's going in your spot because mm-hmm. you don't fly. Nope. I'm like John Madden. No, you're not dead. No, I'm talking about I'm not flying. <laughs> so, and I don't remember. Did John Madden die this year or last year? Last year. It was last year? Yeah. Okay. So, oh, last month. Well, yeah, that was last year. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. <laughs> he's on it. You, you see, people, he's that asshole for real. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Even to his friends. Even to his best friend. <laughs> 30-something years. <laughs> That's a good friend. Oh, heck yeah. Especially stay around you that long. <laughs> you know, to know you from the wild days to the semi-wild now. When he was talking to Ed earlier today, uh-huh. Ed was like, you're going to Vegas with Rob. <laughs> and he was like, dude, I, Rob has scared the shit out of me before. <laughs> and I was like, I don't remember. Yeah, you don't. So, because you're just being you. But I'm excited because we're going to try to do a lot of interviews mm-hmm. and we're going to do some that just go out right away. We're going to do some that are streamed live. Okay. The streaming live, I haven't decided, but I think it's going to be on, like, Facebook. No, no, no. YouTube. YouTube. Okay. And Twitch. Okay. I don't know if anybody on Twitch will show, because, you know, Cigar Talk and Twitch, nobody knows us. Yeah. But it's yeah. a different demographic. It and is. It's, it's like, when I go on there and I'm chatting and people find out about Cigar Talk, they get interested. Mm. Because there's a lot of cigar smokers on Twitch, oh, yeah. but there's no cigar media there. And, you, and I'm like, we're the first. We may, I, and we're not the first. But, 
I understand. But what you're I, I think that it's like a place that we should make a commitment to, and if it's even if it's not very often, mm-hmm. we should at least say hey to those guys. Got gotcha. you, and just see what happens. Can only go up. <laughs> when you're at the bottom, you can only go up. <laughs> Tim, Tim, Tim is like giving me the peace sign, <laughs> like I have forgot that I've only given one of my pick, three. He's, he noticed that you haven't hit the bottle again, so he's making sure. Oh, sorry, is that what you were saying? No, he's saying number two, but oh. he he's pay, he's paying attention as a as a producer. He's like watching. Hey, I didn't know if he was holding up number two, as in you got two more picks, or I need to head to the bathroom to do number two. You know what I mean? So anyway, here he goes, folks. <laughs> I rem- let me let me tell you a little story of back in the day that Tim was a part of. So for my brother's bachelor party, mm-hmm. and my brother's six years younger than me, okay, seven years younger than Tim, mm-hmm. we take him to like the skankiest strip club you could go to i mean like if you showed up in a bikini people would have been throwing 20 dollars bills at you okay no bro. it was bad no bro and because my brother was a young innocent young man we sit him right at the stage oh, and it's my, my brother it's me and then it's tim and then some other guys we don't know uh-huh. tim goes Hey man, I gotta hit the John. What don't let anybody take my chair. And I'm like, okay, cool, man. So anyway, you know, two ton Tessie is on stage. <laughs> the bar two has been Tessie. bent. You know what I mean? The the yeah, pole yeah. is no longer connected at the ceiling. <laughs> so anyway, this dude sitting on the other side of Tim's chair is slamming whiskey. Okay. And I think he's like 21, mm-hmm. like his first time to ever be out drinking. And all of a sudden, I hear the dude, Ralph, right? And I look over, and he's Ralphing in to Tim's See? chair. <laughs> and I was Tim like, Tim just dude, dropped his head, folks. Dude, that's disgusting. <laughs> Tim and then, just dropped and his then, head. And then I start talking to my brother. Uh-huh. Tim comes bebopping back, Jumps right over the back of the chair and sits right in it. I'm tripping off the way Tim looking over. <laughs> and Tim says, "We gotta go." <laughs> and I was like, "Dude, it's my brother's bachelor party. We just got here, dude. I just sat and throw up." And I was like, "Sucks to be you." <laughs> <laughs> Tim probably says, this is my friend. (laughs) Two years, I mean two years, two hours later, he's like, dude, my jeans are soaked through. (laughs) He probably was itching and everything. (laughs) They're warm. Between my jeans and the seat, I feel chunks. No, 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 no. (laughs) He stayed there two hours with you. I was, you know what? The problem was they didn't have Uber back then. We were the only ride, and it was my brother's bachelor party. You can't cut a bachelor party short because somebody sits in somebody else's throw up. Right? (laughs) That was one of the most unenjoyable times Tim's ever had. And he's had a few with me. He looked at you like, ooh. I mean, oh my goodness. So, hey, and if you look down in show notes, there's pictures. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, man. You know, Tim lived with me in St. Louis. Yeah, you told me. <laughs> the, whoo, boy, back in the 90s, too. That's when St. Louis was something else, man. Ah. How many times did I go to Brooklyn? Too I don't many. know. <laughs> we didn't keep count. Because Brooklyn is in Illinois, but it's a city that is all strip clubs and 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 dance pop. You know, not that's pop music. Okay, You're that's where that's pops. where we went. Pops, pops, and, and uh, uh, Oz. Yes, and then PTs. PTs. Yeah, that was all right there together. <laughs> so we, I, I don't know about Brooklyn. Oh my God, that's but where, I, that's where the other PTs okay, was. And so so, you know, mm-hmm. two white boys cross the river. 
We come. Ro- we. I, I miss. I miss the on ramp. So you wound up in East St. Louis. I. I. I yeah. I was yeah. in East St. Louis. Yeah. It was a Saturday night. Ooh. Like we pull up to a four way stop, <laughs> and there Sick are and wrong thing. giant parking lots. Yep. And I want to say there's probably five to seven hundred people yeah. with cars parked. Yep. Music, music just bumping. Mm-hmm. People out everywhere yep. drinking and whoever knows what. Yep. And I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm, I'm for you to be <laughs> nervous. People had, and that's the way St. Louis was back then. It was just like, dude, it was just the an news ongoing. Every night yep. was like another body found in East yep. St. Louis yep. this morning, yep. and uh, they were not happy when they died. <laughs> so, whenever we were over there, I'm like, we're lost. We need to get the hell out of here. Yeah. And so we pull up to a four way stop. Tim is hanging out the window, going. And I'm like, shut the fuck up. I don't there even, it is. I, I, I didn't even stop. I blew through the crossing and I was like, I'm out of here. And you know what? That was the safest thing you did because we don't stop at the stop sign. <laughs> we you get a certain time at night. And even as a cop, when I see people come in certain areas and they would come and they didn't stop, I didn't pull them over because I knew they and knew the, you know, me, the routine. Keep going. My mindset was if we get pulled over, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. <laughs> Can you help me get across the river? Because <laughs> that's the first thing they're going to ask you. Okay, what you here for? And if you don't say I'm going thing, home, I want to go home. Okay, yeah, you need to get right back here and go do this. So. Right. But y'all wound up over in Sarge at Pops. So yeah. that's all that matters. Yeah. So anyway, numbers two mm-hmm. on the list and i went back and forth on this okay. but i did smoke a neanderthal roma craft and it was the genetic deformity oh. i think that's my favorite vitola for that, that series genetic deformity is a beast man and you know what i did that is unusual for me what was that? i didn't v cut it and i didn't cut it i punched it and because you, you know taste. how straight yeah. that freaking shoulder is razor sharp mm-hmm. and you could V cut it. But I think that on a deep V you're going below the cap mm-hmm. line because it's so it's sharp. Yes. Yeah. And so a punch and Jay actually punched it for me, okay. but it was a larger punch. So it was like probably 80% of the cap was a punch uh, and so you got dude, a that's a, i got a great draw on Ooh. it and i smoked it zero issues a lot of flavor and it was just a fantastic that smoke. formity is a bit tough. it's just they didn't play with that stick Romacraft, as we used to have Romacraft Thursdays, but Romacraft makes a quality stick. They make a good stick. And when you get it in certain Viatolas, it's just like, it's amazing, man. They are amazing sticks. Well, let me tell you. Speaking of Romacraft, Mm -hmm. I almost had two Romacrafts in this week because I also smoked the Aquitaine. Oh, I thought you were going to say my stick. (laughs) No, I smoked the Aquitaine. And I, I don't know what the Vitola is called, mm-hmm. but it was close in size to what the, the uh, genetic deformity. Boom. And anyway, I smoked that first. It's been a while since I've mm-hmm. had an Aquitaine, and I like had forgotten what a nice, pleasant Precious. ride mm-hmm. that cigar is. Yes, sir. It's full of flavor. It's full of strength. Mm-hmm. And it's smoked like a 66 Cadillac DeVille. Wow. You know what I mean? You're cruising down the road. Wow. He said a 66. You got some Tech 9 you know, bumping. You know, that's floating down the Boom. highway, baby. Boom. <laughs> wow. You're not taking any sharp curves Boom. because it's just right wow. in there. You know what I mean? Mm. You know what? Mm-mm. That's Mm-mm. that's what I'm going to do from now on. When I find a stick that is, I think is really, really good, I'm going to compare it to a car. That's a good way to do it. I'm going to do that, too. Yeah. I'm going to do that, too. That is, oh, man. You know he what I mean? Said what a, of, what? He said a 66 DeVille. You know, that, that's that's a, they call it a boat, two, but it really wasn't two, a boat. Two-door two convertible yes. with the fins. Yes. Boom. Man. That's what that Aquatane was. Wow. You got the aesthetics. 
The ride. And it the ain't power. about it, you got the power, but it ain't about No, it's the ride, it's, baby. The power is there in case you need it. In case you got a knucklehead on right. the side of you. But in general, <laughs> it's just cruising. It is. Looking good, <sighs> sounding good. Floating. Boom. Floating. All right. So anyway, the Aquatane didn't make the list. <laughs> <laughs> so I need to see what's gonna <laughs> I this is a rare I I have one for you. Okay. I gave one to Jay. I gave one to Zeka. Uh huh. It is the Robert Caldwell Long Live the King. Wow. Lancero. Wow. Yeah, because for you to say what you said about a Lancero. And here's the thing. It was maybe the best cigar I smoked in probably two weeks. Mm. It was good. But on the flip side of that, uh-huh. for me, it is a rarity that I will smoke it because what I know about smoking the Lancero, even one that's that good, uh-huh. is it doesn't allow me to smoke like I smoke. Yeah, because yeah, you can't you, hot box it. You got to take, you take your, your time, time. Mm-hmm. and you got to monitor it. Because it, you got, you're going to enjoy it. If you take your time, you want to enjoy it enough to where you really experience the full everything. Yes. Bodied smoke. I got you. I but got at you. the same time, you can't baby it so much that you let it go out. Uh-uh. You know what I mean? So you got to monitor it. Yes, sir. And that is not one of my go to qualities. But. I'm more of a blow and go. <laughs> Larry says, blow more, blow more, blow more. But it's just, uh, it was a fantastic cigar. Ah. It really was. Ah. And you know what? Zeka even posted that it was one of the best cigars he had had in a long time. Wow. So I look forward to having you smoke it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for that, ride. I'm ready for well, it. Well, you know what? I'll bring it up here for you tomorrow okay. as the Cowboys and the here 49ers go. go at it. I'm glad you took it that way, that, I, level, I, that level. How else would I take it? You started off the show talking noise. I, I did not. You did. I did. What did I say? What, what about the, about the call Cowboys beating the 49ers? I never said yes, nothing about beating. you did. Okay, when you listen to this. Again, you'll realize you're like, oh, he was right again. I don't listen. <laughs> we know. <laughs> what happens, happens. <laughs> Whatever it says, it says. Cheers, bro. Hey, you want to hop in for a minute and say hi? No, I mean where Brian is. Oh, okay. You want to? You want to. Hey. I, don't want hey, to I have no out. problem. Hey, just so I can hear it, thanks for tuning in. Until next time. <laughs> Keep smoking. Boom. <laughs> Nobody does it like you. Like, we've had people try, and, it, dude, Tim's like, yep, that's it. Bryant's got it. Nobody else can duplicate it. That's my thing. Did man. you know, you know, last week on the show, the video thing or the sound thing filled up, and it just cut yeah, off. Yeah, I remember. So we lost about 10 minutes. Yeah. So I went in and recorded a, hey, guys, sorry, that's the end of the show, but blah, 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 blah. Uh-huh. And then when I said, keep smoking, whatever, I went in and I really digitized it so it sounded like <laughs> shit because I didn't want to be compared to the way you do it. You wanted to make sure that you didn't come. Yeah, because my, my, I'm not trying to copy. Gotcha, Bryant man. is a, like, coin guy. <laughs> <laughs> And then Julio walks in. Julio. Julio on, Carlos. That's his porn name. <laughs> so anyway, hey, we we're gonna slide Jay in just before we go, guys. I you know, we're at Jay's place. And you know, I you know what, this is kind of a test run. It wasn't exactly what I had thought because and that's why we did it. We had to do a test run. And so let, let's slide this way over here. There you go. How about that? Now, Looks good. There we go. Can you can you move that over and get us centered a little bit and zoom in a little bit? There goes Julio. For those of you who missed it, Julio, and then there's Coolio. <laughs> That's Coolio. Coolio. is a member back here. Yeah, Coolio. Got him. He he went bald. So anyway, hey man, thanks for letting us hang out here and do the show. It's a it's a pleasure, an honor to have you guys back here, and um, I'm hoping we can set up something to where it's a lot more easy setup. I, I think we're very close. I, we, we are a lot closer than we were, 
And, you know, I kind of shoot from the hip on a lot of stuff. So, yeah. like, I don't measure. Hey, me too. And then whenever I come back, I'm like, oh, that's not going to work. Six inches, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> and so it we started over there, and it was just so uncomfortable because the mic was, like, up here. And I felt like I was sitting under a horse. Yeah. And and that's something the last minute I didn't, I didn't even think to think about that was the seat height. Yeah, I didn't either. Well, it's not the seat height so much. I think it's the bar height. Well, the, the bar is, is made for people that's sitting about yay high. Right, right, right. Yeah, just kind of like slumping over, hang, but having a drink. And you know what is these microphone stands, this is the lowest they go. What if? I wish they... I mean, if you could, like, cut this off, like, right here and then, like, put threads on it, you would be, like, ahead of the game. But I don't know if that's possible because, you know. I think we get a black pipe about that big. Do what like kind a of black pipe? Do, like, a nipple. And then if nothing else, you have to angle it up. You know what I mean. Yeah. Brian, come on, man. <laughs> okay, so it's a nipple on a black pipe is about a three-inch piece. It's got an inch of no threads. Two inches on both sides, one inch on both sides have have threads. And uh, let me ask you one question: Are you get are you literally inch. trying to turn me on? No, I'm literally <laughs> trying to get you solve a problem here. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. gotcha. <laughs> but uh, I think they do make it in a half inch size. I, if you want, I can check Lowe's. I got to go to Lowe's like probably Tuesday. You think that's a half inch? I, yeah, that. that Guys, this is a half an inch. Okay. I'm, I'm not arguing. I'm just asking. If you want, you can let me have one of these. Yeah, just, I, I was going to. I, I, no, I plan on leaving these here. The problem is. Once we get back from TPE. Is we need to make sure that the thread is. Is accurate. the same thread, right. Because right, you don't want to. Because I know the pipe is a very long thread. You know, a lot of space in between. And I think this is yeah. more like a machine thread. But oh, okay. maybe we could have it machined. Maybe. You know. Brian's not doing shit. <laughs> so anyway, hey man, thanks for letting us hang out though. Yes. It's been a great day, and do you know what I I wish you could do more often? And I know that your time is very limited that you can actually hang out with me because there's more important people in your life. But we would love for you to hang out sometime. Back here on Saturdays. On Saturdays. Is that a, is that like because I know that's a rough day for you to be free. It's it's not rough. It's just my only day off. Oh well, I mean, you come up here and work sometimes on Saturdays. I do. Um, so it's, I mean, it's not always your day it's, off. It's not always my day off, right? But it's, but if you were if you were up here, and there was already somebody else working. Then you could hang out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest with you. Okay, lay it on me. The problem is, mm-hmm. whenever I have a day off, and when I come When do you up, have a day off? I, I don't know. I've never seen you have a day off. Usually Saturdays. Usually. Okay. But on my day off, if I come up here... It's over. It's not a day off. Right. It's, it's over. It, it's not that my guys need my help. My guys can take care of the shop regardless. Right. It's just. But there's a, there's always something to do. Yeah. If if I'm sitting hanging out. And I know I've seen you hang out. And I and, see and somebody you, that and needs you, help. And you are like <laughs> not relaxed. It's hard for you to relax while you're here because you see a new guy or you see a customer that you know and you always reach out to help them. Well, yeah, yeah. I know. I, I get that. I do have a relax. I do have a relax mode. I, I've never seen that. Nobody has. Did you see what I brought, Alan? I did. How'd you like that? Maybe I didn't. What did you bring him? <laughs> I don't know if he even plays Magic anymore. Yeah. But I bought him... Or I brought him card covers that say R T T no R T F C. Read the fucking card. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 
I was like, you know what? I've had these forever. I want to give these to you, Alan. And if you ever play, I think that is perfect, right? Hashtag I'm a nerd too. Right. So I know what RTFC means. Um, no, uh, I do have a relax mode. A lot of people haven't seen it. Um, my wife hasn't seen it, but she has kind of been the um, the inaugurator of it. And for anybody listening, this might sound weird unless you do it yourself. But there is a peace and tranquility you achieve through a process of just laying for about an hour. Now, in now, a, now, I do know of a time that you have like completely let go. Yeah. Completely relaxed. What's that? It was in a decompression chamber. That's what I was about to say. <laughs> you I don't about know anybody who's done that before. In a decompression chamber. And a, uh, and it is just, is it, is it, is it as awesome as it sounds? It really is. So it's, it's not a decompression chamber. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a pod. It's, it's essentially a pod, but it's a, uh, it's a D not decompression. I just had the word. It's a. Sensory deprivation. Yeah, it's a it's a, depri- a deprivation chamber. Thank you, Larry. How and was that like bliss to you? Yeah. So, did you have a cigar in there? No, I, you don't need one. Really? Surprisingly, you don't need one. So, in a deprivation chamber, it is completely black. You like can you can't open, see shit. You can, you can have your eyes open, but you can't see anything. And you lay in a pool of water that is treated with Epsom salts to counterbalance your own weight. The air in the chamber is modified to 98.6 degrees. So at a certain point when your body is in full relaxation, you cannot tell where the water stops and the air begins. Do you feel like you're levitating? You are just floating in nothing. So levitation. Yeah. And is that amazing? It's, It's absolutely amazing. And it's really honestly at this point, I... I've been a minister, I've been a hard-working warehouse guy, I've been a delivery driver, I've been a salesperson, and I own a cigar shop. It's the only absolute peace that I've ever felt. Are you serious? Seriously. Wow. And and that's, you know, that's just telling you what I did since I moved to Texas. I did a lot of shit when I lived in Hawaii, but... The absolute peace that hey, so, supersedes so, even Hawaii peace. So, so what does that process or service, what does that cost? Is it expensive? No. It's about like 60 bucks. Are you serious? Yeah. It's real cheap. Dude. Uh, shout out hey, to. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Sorry. You do 30. I do 30. We do it together. Yeah. Dude, that would be fun. No, straight up. Like, you can have groups in there. Wow. We should do a show from in there. Do, like, a couples thing. <laughs> Brian, you down? Brian, are you down? <laughs> With me? Okay. Maybe. He trusts you. <laughs> a soft maybe. <laughs> I, I, I would love to do that. Like, I think that would be something that would be right up my alley. I'll tell you what, a lot of people that are, you know, they they deal with stress every single day that that get this opportunity to experience a zero stress environment, not 100 percent of the time they will be receptive because they're expecting stress. I can say that for uh, my own experience. When I first did it, I was so taken back by how relaxed I was. I was a different. My wife said I was a different man when I came out. And so then the second time I went, same thing. So the third time I had a schedule to go, I went ahead and I bought Corey, my business partner, a a period of time in the deprivation tank. Has he gone? He's gone. But you have to get in the mindset where you're ready to just let go. He took that time to kind of compartmentalize everything. To where it wasn't relaxing to its fullest. He was just laying in the dark in water. <laughs> so he didn't really See, get the whole experience. And to be honest with you, like thinking of Corey in that tank. Yeah. 
I'm like, he's probably pleasuring himself. <laughs> no. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't want to go in there after Corey. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> right. <laughs> it wasn't frothy before <laughs> so no i i would love to do that and i didn't i thought it was way more expensive no it's it's the, it's the coolest experience and it's it's very affordable and to be quite honest i'm highly probably due for one uh, i'm thinking i should go before i go to vegas that'd be badass you know what i kinda, mean kind of get you re recalibrated Ready to go to relax. Right. So um, one of the things that when my when I said my wife said I was a different man, one of the things that she said she could perceivably see was my shoulders had dropped. I, I'm not carrying all this stress like, oh. yeah, you know, and regularly I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, it's all good. But you still have all this stress and it just drops. And it's not that your problems disappear. It's that you now have a clarity of mind to figure out that, yeah, I can handle this and I can, I can pinpoint the different areas where I can strategically handle these situations. Without, I would love to do that. I, I would love to do that because, I mean, just like yesterday, yeah. I'm sitting in the shed. Yeah. I've got a gun in my mouth. No, I'm just kidding. That's that's probably you're long overdue for a for a treatment, <laughs> right? It's like eh, you shouldn't I'm do trying that. To suck, I'm trying to suck start a forty two and uh... no, so no, that's definitely something I'm going to put on my list. I yeah, think man. that sound. I I knew you that you had done that. You want one? I'm gonna do that. I'll buy you one. No, you just got to show up. What are you doing tomorrow? <laughs> well, I. <laughs> Football's on tomorrow. Yeah. Are you going to be here tomorrow? Yeah, I'm going to be here tomorrow. Fucking Illies. Fucking Eagles are going to upset the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Cowboys going to upset whoever the hell. The 49ers. (laughs) (laughs) I'm waiting for Brian to give me that look. No, bro. Come on, man. Hey. Hey, don't don't be a hater because he's preaching the truth. I said that. Hey, I said that to get you to look at me. Because you're looking at the Buffalo Bills right now. And I'm feeling a little jelly. Okay, Wait, I was pulling for the Bills, and they're up thirty-three to three. Josh Allen, man, dude's a quarterback. New England got three points. Yeah, shit, I just lost. Wow. No, I'm kidding. No. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll be up to eight. The Leaf every single year, year during the playoffs, we do pizza playoffs Sundays on Sundays only. I understand that playoffs are multiple days, but every Sunday of the playoffs, you get a shit ton of pizza, put it out for the members. You guys have fun. And we're going to. Oh, yeah. We're going to. And I'll tell you this. It's BYOB. So my wife called me. Yeah. And was like, hey, we're going to do a family dinner. You know, the whole family plus Luke's girlfriend. And I'm like, okay, cool. Whenever, you know. And she's like, how about Sunday at 530? And I'm like, yeah, that's not going to work. Yeah, no. And she's like, why? And I'm like, Cowboys are in the playoffs. And she's like, do you have to see this game? And I'm like, the Cowboys haven't been in the playoffs in a long, long time. Here's the thing. You can watch this game or you could choose not to and just watch the next one. But the, the game you need to watch is Super Bowl. <clears throat> well, the Cowboys won't be in the Super Bowl. It's going to be the Dallas Cowboys. And who? Versus the Kansas, Kansas City Chiefs. Do you think so? Yeah. I think that would be a very interesting matchup, and I think it could be a really good game. Yeah. But I don't know that the Cowboys can get through Green Bay. You don't have to. Why? Because after Philly trumps Tampa Bay. They'll de-seed Green Bay. You guys will come in and de-seed Rams. the Eagles. Oh, we, we would go the Rams, well, the next, Rams, and then, then the, the Eagles, Eagles for the for the conference championship. And then boom, you're into I, the. Super I, Bowl. I have a hard time seeing you guys beat Green Bay. Seriously, I do. Like for real? Yes. <laughs> I of, now, out of, out of be... all the out of all the teams remaining. Philadelphia is one of the only teams equipped to play in that atmosphere. I well, that's true. 
That's true. Also, keep in mind that the secondary has been bolstering week after week for the last four or five weeks. That's a long time for a second and, string. To and stay. keep in mind that the running game has been picking up since midseason. Now, we don't have to beat the Cowboys. We just have to DC the Eagles. I mean, the, uh, the Green Bay Packers. Okay? That gives you one last shot. I, I, I don't. D-A-L v p h i <coughs> number three let me tell you something i am not a fan of having to play green bay in the playoffs you don't have to i'm just telling you i hope you're right hey just root for my eagles hey you know what hey you know what will there be any guys on the eagles wearing gloves to catch with like eagles on the glove bro can i run get that real quick yeah oh go shit ahead. okay Dude. Tell I don't know. Tim. So I guess it's probably been about eight weeks ago, maybe a little longer, that I was talking to Tim, and Tim has – Hey, are you leaving, Larry? Yeah, I got to go. All right, man. Be good, bro. Good seeing you. I understand, bro. Have a good one, man. Hey, we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. So anyway, Tim has a certain set of skills, and a big part of that is he's a print guy. And we searched and searched and found the perfect art to make for Jay as a Christmas gift. And then right before Christmas, I asked Tim if it was ready, and no, it was not. Because Tim was slacking. But Tim has made it, and he has presented Jay with a great gift because Jay is one of those guys that when it comes time to give Jay a gift, you don't just give him something. You think about Jay. You know what I mean? And I don't do that with a lot of gifts. I'm like, boom. But this is what we gave Jay today. Go ahead. All right, hold on. Okay, everybody. Have you seen it? Without further ado, and every single person that has been a friend of mine that's coming to the shop, I've shown this off. Because this is badass. It is the most badass thing. Second, or tied for first badass thing I've gotten. And he has kids. Look at this. Dude. Look at the detail on that. You can hey, see. Listen, li- hey, can you get me a 49er one? Can you get me one of the 49ers? You can see the threads. You can see the, the fibers coming off the fabric. That's badass, dude. Straight up, like... Like, you know, and here's the thing, Jay. Tim is always wanting to help print stuff for Cigar Talk, and I was like, eh, fuck Cigar Talk. Let's do something with the Eagles. Dude. If he was wanting to print stuff for Cigar Talk, and you said, no, 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 until now, you fucked up, man. I know, I know, I know, I know, but... Did you see this? I did. I I didn't know how good it was going to look, but I know that when Tim does anything, he is a perfectionist, and he goes all out. Just just look at it. You want to kiss it? Yeah, I'll let you kiss the back of it. See, do you hear that? That's the third one, because the first two weren't good enough. Thank you, Tim. And the first two are going to end up in the Scar Talk studio. <laughs> one for you, one for Brian. He asked me if I wanted to do some Dallas Cowboy stuff. Hey, Tim, tell him. Tell him, Tim. You asked me if I wanted to Dallas Cowboy something for the studio. And what did I say? No. Yeah. How hard is it to draw a star? I, I, I mean. My kid can draw you one. I am not that level of a fan. You know, I, if, I know you, that. if you would have asked me that back in 92, That's 93, it. 94, 95, I would have been all over it. But now I'm in the position where I'm like, you know what? You guys got some shit to prove to me. You As know it, what I mean? Because I'm tired of the whole kitten caboodle of oh, we we're kidding. Straight up as an Eagles fan. I had told Rob months ago, this is the year, right? You did months ago. This is the year. Now it's it's your it's in your hands. It's in not yours, but the Dallas Cowboys' hands to make it the year. But but you they every single time have, tell me I've been burned before. Right, and they have they have earned the opportunity. Yeah, 
but they have not looked good in the last eight weeks to me. Not- Except for the last game, which I did not watch, but I heard about. I was like, you know what? I'm, you know, it's the last game. And you're not playing a team that that's, they're that, they're not that good anyway. No offense. I, I, I get that, but you look at what's left. Yeah. Well, I mean, right, right, what, right. What are we looking at here? Uh, Bills and Patriots. What's the score? 33 Buffalo, 9 uh, New England. 33 and there's, 9 New oh, England. Oh, well, there's still some time left, so you, you don't count them out yet, but you know. But all I'm saying is not that the, the field is weak. Somebody has to win. Okay. And who do you think the strongest contender of who is left? Who is the strongest contender? Philadelphia. Let me rephrase that. Mm-hmm. Who is a legitimate contender? Legitimate? Yeah. Cincinnati. <laughs> Did they you want lose? me to say Dallas? <laughs> no, no. I'm I'm serious. Who who are the top three? Who's the top four contenders that are the people that are left? I mean, do you think that the Cardinals are legitimate? I don't. Well, I I think they this particular year they might be. I don't. I I, I, I put them on the bubble. So I Cardinals. Think, I think it's going to come down Dallas, to Philly. And Cliff doesn't have playoff experience. I mean, it's a whole new game when you go into the playoffs. I'm going to say Nick Foles never had playoff experience in Molly. The first time, like in New England, the first time, but he did gain it. <laughs> he rocked, but no, I mean, as a coach, even he's never been there. You got that. You got that right. But the Rams the same, have been there. Same time. The Cowboys have been there. Green Bay's been there. Tampa's been there. How many, I think that's your four teams but, right there. But how many times have we seen this season that a blind squirrel finds that nut? A team that you don't think is going to win it blows out. Let me tell you favorite. what. In episode 162, Larry found a nut. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> I don't know what that means. It was Bryant's, but oh, <laughs> it's not that hard. It's big. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway. Larry, what's that like? Grapefruit, softball, each size. Joe, hey, you know what? <laughs> we talked about all our sponsors. Yeah. Let's just tell everybody one more time, dude. Tabanero. No, no, no. Oh, what? The leaf. The leaf. Look down at show notes. They we have the phone shut number up, every week. Up, you can call. Up. Also, if you're within. I mean, a hundred miles. Swing by, please. Swing, swing by. by, dude. Do we have a good group of people? I think we have a great group of people, and you know what? Like I, Zach. Zach was here all day today. Dude, Zach is a new member, right? And, and as soon as he walked in, it was like, forever. "Hey, Zach!" Yeah, and and you got to check out the humidor. Uh, we've always got a nice selection. We. Br- br- in the on the cusp of uh, augmenting a couple of our sections, so that we got new stuff coming in. Well, you got you got uh, Dunbarton. We got Dunbarton. You got McAuliffe. Got You've got Tabanero. Yep. You've got uh, Definition Cigars. Yep. You've got Roma Craft. Yep. Uh, you've got all the mainstays. Yeah, I, got I mean, you General it, Cigar, Altadis, Crown Heads, Partagas Blacks. Arturo you've got all, all the different Partagas. You've got all the different My Fathers. Yep. Romeo and Julietas. Yep. Macanudo. Uh, you've got Monte Cristos. Uh, you also have Bro. Dissident Cigars. Yeah. Which. Bro, if you haven't tried Dissident, everybody. They're like the hidden gem. The hidden gem. And you now need to. that they have a new owner, Sam, I'm so excited. I'm gonna try to. I'm. I'm gonna try now that we kind of got this setup done to see if when Sin comes down, we could just have something here. Oh, absolutely! You, you guys do your that, show. That's a no no brainer. When when she comes down, the new owner of Dissident. Is like I when I found out that she was the new owner, I was like, I can smoke their cigars again. Yeah. Hey, straight up, if if you like cigar companies that call you 
or that notify you that there's a change. I didn't know there was a change at Black Label or Dissident. Right. Before Sin sent me an email saying, hey, hi, Jay. I'm Sin. I'm the new owner of. And I was like, okay, cool. And then her follow up. I'm trying to get out to all my shops. I'm so super excited to see you guys. See you soon. Yeah. And dude, I mean, even before they're making really, really good cigars. Oh, yeah. And so the fact that now the owner is somebody that I really like. Yep. I'm like, sweet. I'm going to be supporting this brand because when you have an owner at that level that has that passion for the cigar industry and the community, you want to support them. Yeah, absolutely. Because they invest so much into the community that you want to not just by obligation, but you want to show your support by, hey, thank you so much for what you do. Here's how I'm going to help. And when the cigars are fantastic cigars, yeah. it makes that process a lot easier. It really does. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and I, I know you love Salvation. Right. Lawless. Wow. Lawless is good. That'll give you a kick. And also, if you haven't had the porcelain. Oh, y'all. I said y'all. 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 If you haven't, if you haven't had porcelain, <laughs> y'all come back here. You now here. <laughs> if you're accustomed to smoking first thing in the morning, and that you have porcelain. a nice, rich, dark coffee, you might. I don't care if you even put just like two shakes of cream in there, maybe finer than a frog's hair split three ways. You smoke you a porcelain. Wow, creamy. Wow. Yeah. You realize I didn't realize. That a cigar could taste like this. If you're not smoking Connecticut's, you're doing yourself a disservice. There's a lot of good Connecticut's out there. Yeah. Four years ago, I would have been like, I ain't smoking no Connecticut's. I'm cool. You know, I smoke the big dark black smoke, you know. <laughs> Everybody, I knew Rob four years ago, and he was all fat ring gauge, yeah. darkest cigars you could ever get. <laughs> if someone said... Hey, that was part that of your... Is that is a strong cigar. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to smoke two of them back hey, to back. But that was part of your journey. Absolutely. A lot of people start off small and work their way up. I you, dove you head start off first. Head first. I'm going to go in, go in hard, and, and taper it off a little bit. But from there, you could walk in what you like rather than, you know, starting off medium or light and kind of walking a little bit further to find your niche right not to say that everybody have to start off hard no some people might find that habanos man habanos dude i i I would imagine that if you are starting out from like the lighter cigars yeah when you get to the habano or sun groans it's like wow yeah you know what i mean oh yeah but if you start off really full blown like i did you even have that experience when you go back to the connecticut's that have that wow factor yeah because now that you've tried the hardest stuff possible and you could find these flavors and you try the habano and you can pinpoint things you try the connecticut or something medium to light you have now trained yourself to think about trying to find these nuances here and there and Those Connecticut's you thought were like, oh, those are just real light. I don't want to smoke those like rocking in a rocking chair, doing something but going nowhere. You're you're actually finding, hey, I taste this. I can experience this. I know what this is, even on a lighter scale. And what that communicates to the cigar smoker that's, you know, experienced is, oh, so that's not super harsh, but I get these notes. Right. I can smoke that in the morning. Right. Yeah. I can smoke two of those in the morning. Is this mine? Yes. So I forget. here's another question I have for you before we go. I have a couple of different friends. Yeah. Just two. Well, in this scenario, but in this scenario, they both. One is a new cigar shop owner. Yeah. And one is a new cigar shop manager. Okay. You've been very successful in the 
short amount of time that you've been a cigar shop owner, Mm -hmm. what advice would you give someone just getting into the business? Just getting into the business? Right. Any cigar knowledge? Both of these people already have a lot of cigar knowledge. Number one, it's about the people. No matter what, cigars are a destination business. Wherever you are, if people want cigars, if you have any kind of advertisement, they'll find you. Treat them right. It's about the people. Okay, Listen to what they want. Try to fit them where they belong in the humidor. And they'll come back. Number two, we're here to make money as a retailer. Sure. But we're not here to be greedy. Don't find cigars that are hard to get a hold of and jack up the price. Right. Make your money on it, but allow people to experience it. That way, you will not only suffer not having it as long now, by yourself. Now, have you learned that lesson by experience? No. Well, or was that over, always over time? I mean, did you go through a series where you were like, oh, these are special cigars. We got to charge more for these. No. So you've always been like, I want people to be able to enjoy these cigars. I smoked the cigars and thought, holy crap, everybody's going to love these. I've never smoked this cigar thinking I could make a shit ton of money on this. And, you know, I because this is our home shop. I haven't really experienced a lot of shops that do that, even though I know it happens. But what I have experienced very similar to that is like liquor stores. Like I and I've said, yeah. you know, there's a liquor store in Sweetwater that has Eagle Rare on the shelf for ninety nine dollars. No, don't buy it. Right. I'm not because you're just feeding. And this goes back to cigar consumers if you see a cigar on the shelf that's 99 dollars, that's you find elsewhere at a b&m that's you know 20 bucks don't buy that cigar support that b&m buying something else but at the same time don't don't reinforce the stigma right of hey i just i just sold this for a hundred bucks it's worth a hundred bucks because In retail, everybody knows, or most people in in retail knows, the value of something is only worth what somebody's willing to pay for it. And if somebody's willing to pay 99 bucks for a stick, that's how much it costs. Right. Whereas for us, we'll do our standard markup, and if somebody buys it, great. They get to enjoy it. If there's something that's very rare or limited, we might... Go so far as put a restriction on there insofar as, hey, only two per customer per day. Right. But very seldom because, man, these are natural products. People want to smoke these. Why are you going to dangle it in front of them? If you can sell it, sell it. Right. But don't but don't gouge people. So we see so much of this. I mean, elsewhere for me, gouging, I like. I see, you know, on cigars and other items of special limited editions, you see stuff that is like on the secondary market that people are selling for an upcharge. And you know what? There's a place for that. I don't have a problem with that. What I have a problem with is when the retailer gets engaged with that Mm -hmm. you know what i mean because it's just like the eagle rare for 99 dollars. i'm like i know somebody might buy this over here for 35 dollars and then put it on the black market or whatever the trade market for 99 yeah but when the retail shop engages in that activity it takes the fun out of it for the guys who are out always looking for that right and Case in point, alcohol-wise, Blanton's. I have a shop here in town that notifies me when rare things come in. They didn't gouge me on Blanton's. When I bought it and I shared it with the guys, they were like, oh, my God, this is like 
$280 a bottle. I'm like, it's in, not. <laughs> in, let me tell you something. When I was in Sweetwater, they had two bottles of Blanton. And the retail guy was selling them for two fifty a piece. No. What'd you give for it? Sixty five, honestly. Yeah, like fifty eight bucks, man. And so what that does, it makes me not want to shop at that guy's shop. Yeah, because if there's a bourbon that I see that I want to try, I don't know how much he's gouging on that. You know what I mean? If it if it's something I've never had before, I'm like, I don't know what that's supposed to cost. Right. The dude had a bottle of Heaven and Hill Bottle and Bond, which we had at the studio probably within the last three months. Bottle and Bond. And we had it for 45 bucks. Mm -hmm. He had it on the shelf in Sweetwater for $114.99. $114.99. Right, and I was like, bro, this isn't even that hard to find. I agree it's good, but it makes me like not want to shop at your store because I don't want to pay thirty seven eighty or thirty seven ninety nine for a bottle of uh uh what Buffalo Trace. Here's the thing. People are gonna respond to the current situation that we find our country in in myriad of different ways they're going to either think to do the best for my family i'm going to gouge or they're going but to I, say i think a lot of times when you see gouging to that extent it's greed it could be greed it like not i don't know a percentage i'd be lying to you if i did but yes when you see a need and you see a supply and you see a offset you're going to want to capitalize on that that's what is the beauty of a capitalist environment but at the same time greed ruins it when you juxtapose liquor and cigars i get that liquor will provide some kind of communal environment but cigars is sort of the great equalizer so at some point in the discussion, we have to come down to where it, we derive it as apples and oranges. And we're selling apples, they're sharing, selling oranges, and our apples, they're as sweet as anything else. And They're like we, Granny we, Smith's and we can't green apples. And we can sell it for more than what it's worth. And I'm going to tell everybody right now, this is what I know personally about Jay. I was in his office... And he was talking about how he intentionally finds cigars at the best price so that he can provide cigars at the best price. And that's right. So we have a diverse supply chain. And the reason for that is whenever we, there are price increases across the nation, and you, everybody listening knows that there's price increases. Absolutely. The last person to hear about those, tertiary market. Right. So we have a couple of vendors on tertiary market that we try to capitalize on. And again, I'm trying not to be an asshole or be greedy, but if I can get product in at the same price before a price increase, that restricts the amount of price increase we have to do to the humidor. Right. And... Hey, if, if there's a natural price increase, I get it. Like I, I get the, the, the cost of production. I get the cost of shipping, you know, shipping the cost of paying people more because of COVID. And there's a limited supply of people to actually make cigars. I, I understand there's a limited supply of actual wood to make boxes because boxes are now just a hard thing to make because people can't cut the wood. But I get it. But at the same time, I know my people. You want to provide gonna the every experience. Yeah. And it, you know what? And here's the thing. As a cigar smoker, when a manufacturer raises the price and you, in turn, raise the price, I have zero concern about that. And maybe I should, but I don't. My concern comes from a retailer 
upping the price of a cigar 30, 40% because it's a hard cigar to find. You know what I mean? That I get it. It's, it, it's, and it's just like anything else. I know there's secondary markets, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to pay those prices. I, I'm a blue collar working guy. I'm going to Easter egg something for you, and I hope Brian's listening. All right. You ready? I'm ready. CAO made a cigar last year or so called the Amazon Basin. Yes, yes. We're listening. For the past few years, we've been threatened with, oh, last production, last production. It's all based on the FDA. If you guys haven't reached out to... Cigar Rights of America, go ahead and reach out. Go by sign their website. Up. They make it so easy for you to send your senator an email. Sign up. Send your senator an email. This is this is important to you if you're a cigar smoker. So FDA is cracking down. So the Amazon Basin then come out during a time where it's the crackdown. Right. So CAO says this is the last release, boys. So we're like, all right, guess what? Hey, everybody, there's a secret release. So we're like, oh, shit, a secret release? All right, so we sign up, we get the secret release, boom, it's on the shelves, it's gone. All right, now we're told there might be a few more. Another release, very, very allocated, five-star account. And okay. do you automatically be like, I'm not going to let anybody have one unless you're on a list? No. no, no. You know what I mean? Because that's I, the bullshit dude, that I, I don't like. Dude, I know there's shops that do that, but at the same time, administratively, I can't keep up with the list, man. Like, I got four little kids. I got a wife at home. I got a life You can outside. barely remember their names. Right. Well, I... I, I say, hey, whichever one you are, get over here. <laughs> right. And dude, I, I like not to get into my personal biz, but I lead a lodge out here. Dude, it's it's tough, right? And so there my time is is my time is monopolized. Yes. So when I get this notification from my rep that says, Hey Jay, guess what? Amazon Basin. I'm like, Bro, send me twenty boxes. His response, I'll send you as much as I can. <laughs> Guess what, Brian? We're getting a lot of boxes. If you miss those cigars, no, we didn't. We, we did not get a lot of those boxes. Brian, it's, it's one of those, we don't have room on the shelf. But if you say, hey, I want that Amazon Basin, we'll get you the Amazon Basin. So... Um, I don't know how many allocation we had to deal with, but we got a few boxes. And see, the the initial temptation was 50 bucks a stick. You know, just like, oh, I don't want, I want it to where people can buy it, but not buy it all. But, but. And you know what? I think. That if you did that, there would be a lot of people buy it. They were. I have no doubt. But you know what? You wouldn't do that. No. Because that's not who you are. When we opened the box and saw what was in there, that was the first thought. But then I thought, oh, my God, Brian's going to be fucking so happy. Yes. So it's about the people. Like, you know, these people are waiting for these items. So right? that, that when it all breaks down to the nutshell. Yeah. It's about do what you do for the people that come in the shop. Not just for the people that come into the well, shop, but just just think. Because you get a lot of people ordering to ship. We do. But we have to think about, sure, in our context here in Abilene, we have to think about the people. The people that buy stuff, the people that want stuff. And at the same time, we understand... As a corollary, we are in the realm of countercultural to what may transpire in the rest of the nation where we need to capitalize on everything that we can't get regularly. 
at the same time, I don't want to ship out boxes to some place that might not have an allegation of this stuff. Well, let, me ask, let me ask you this. How long have you been the owner of a cigar lounge? How long has it been now? Is, um, it, is it two years? Almost three years. Almost three years. Yes. Holy crap. So three years ago when you were getting your beak wet, yep. did you have any imagination that it would be what it is right now? Because I think the answer would be yes. I knew what it could be. I knew where it, where it can be. And that's yes to be seen. But at the same time, I knew what we had to go through to get it. And so... Because, I mean, to be honest, we all love Old Man Bill. Yeah. But Old Man here. Bill was done. <laughs> he was here today. and But he was done. Yeah. He was not trying to be innovative. He was just trying to get the hell out. Granted, yeah. I mean, he, he did his time, and he did a great thing. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, he was done. And then it was your time. I just am curious, did you think this is where we would be in this stage of your ownership? Where... <coughs> Because that's a tough question. It is. It's a tough question for anybody that's entering into the tobacco tobacco shop, cigar shop. Right. And that's business. why I'm asking. Because I have friends that are just now getting into it. We're two years in. And I don't want to sound like a nerd. There's a lot of people that don't think of me as a nerd, but I'm a nerd. I I think of you as a hard <laughs> core. If you saw him either playing Magic the Gathering or dressed up like Spider-Man, you would know. Bro, that was a badass <laughs> Spider-Man costume, though. It I'll, was. It was. It was. I put a text out to you so you put it on the show. I'm going to put it right the, here. Dude, I'm going to put it awesome. right there. No, um, we had a lot of... Uh, analytics run um, a lot of people don't do that they look at the uh, just the standard books that are requested for buying an existing business we had a lot of analytics run and then we took those based on the promise of what it looked like and we had another uh, tertiary and uh, caducionary set of analytics run and is that like a Sumatra massage? I mean, new rue. What? What exactly? Is, I, I, you know, you get all those. So basically, what that means is you take. If you're wanting to buy a business, you look at uh, the current numbers, and you see how profitable it is, and then you had an analytic done to see to extrapolate what that uh, profit margin would look like in the oncoming year with the current at that time uh, setbacks in the industry. And I mean, to be fair, you bought the leaf and it was a transition. And then just about the time you're transitioning, bam, COVID. COVID. Was here. Yeah, fucking COVID. Yeah. Dude, who would have imagined <laughs> COVID? So, okay, here's the thing. So we had all these analytics done and we decided, okay, holy shit, this has got some promise. You know, there's some goodwill in here, there's a lot of momentum that we can capitalize on if we can get to the point where we hit the ground running and we start pushing this, we can get to where we want to be. And you saw a little bit of the light at the end of the tunnel, even we, during COVID. We saw the light, right? And so we have um, essentially, you know, like the 10 year plan. Everybody has a 10 year plan. I don't. <laughs> a, a lot of people, not all the people, have a 10-year plan. So we took a look at the cigar shop for the 10-year plan, and the, the thing we decided was two things. One, as I mentioned before, it's about the people. No matter how many times we have to take a hit, people have to be able to come here and find peace. Well, as we like to say, the leaf has become the home away from home. Yeah. 
And a lot of people leave on trips, come back, first place they stop, they leave, have a cigar, and then say, everybody, I'm home. Right. I mean, look at Ed. He just came back from a, what, five, three or four week trip? And the first thing he does is like, hey, man, are you available for tomorrow? We're going to have coffee and cigars. I'm like, I'm down. Yeah. And then number two, it's about the, the profiteering. About making money, but don't, I don't be greedy. I don't, I don't even believe that. I don't believe that for a second. And okay. let me tell you why. Why? I think that your number one priority is to make sure your customers are happy. The experience yeah. is number one. And then I really think number two, which you discredit because you don't really take ownership like I think you should, is that your staff is happy. Bro, my staff is awesome. I okay. know I, 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 I'm, I know you have an awesome staff, but I also talk to them when you're not here, and they're happy about being here. Reconnaissance. Okay, let me address the first one. Okay. So, the first point about... Was it staff? No, consumer. Oh. You, the experience is your number one. Right, right. So the number one thing that I tell my guys is I want people to have the best possible experience. If they're calling or coming in about something that we don't have, direct them someplace. Where they, where they, can, they can find be fulfilled. what they, right. Right. Apologize. Hey, we don't have it. This is what we do have. Are you interested in these? What do you like about that particular thing? Maybe I have something comparable. Right. And then if not, then to, then refer them elsewhere. You know, I want people to have an experience where, yeah, I went there and they didn't have it. But, you know, I they're pretty cool guys. They, they, they got me to where I needed to be. Or, yeah, I went in there. I wanted this. They didn't have it on hand. But I got this other thing amazing you know i don't know if you even know this have you ever seen a miracle on 34th street yeah well i've, I've seen like parts of it during christmas so time like, while i was taking a break wrapping presents the nut job that was santa he was the actual santa but he was also a nut job uh -huh. but when he was up there and kids were coming up and he yeah. they were saying hey i want this he was like telling the parents you know, Macy's doesn't carry that, but the five and dime on Willis does. Uh, and Macy's was like, you know what? That's genius. That's what we're going to do. If we don't have it, we're going to show the customer where they can get it. Yeah. And then all the other stores started following suit because the customers were so happy that it wasn't like, no, we don't carry this. Instead, you need to buy this. And that's what you do. I didn't realize that, but that's badass. I might actually watch the whole damn movie Watch now. the whole damn movie. <laughs> that's what it's about. I mean, well, that's not what it's really about, but that's part of it. Well, and that's something that I just took from customer service since I was like 16 years old was customer service doesn't end with who you're representing. You... you they're still a customer if even if they leave. Right. But help them. Help them find what they need, especially if it's something off the wall. You know, like, you know, we get a lot of sh uh, calls for Kratom and CBD. Right. Well, we get a bunch of Kratom and CBD shops in town. You know what I do? I made a list of all the Kratom and CBD shops near me and said, hey, go over here. We don't carry that. I don't care if they like referral business you're gonna get what you want and wouldn't it be nice if the guys over at the kratom shops whenever someone came in and said hey man you got a cigar and they were like oh you should call the leaf but i doubt anybody looking at their shops are looking for cigars that would be awesome but unfortunately according to the google analytics that's not they're just looking happening. up quote unquote smoke shops and thinking that they're going to get to a head shop or a kratom shop 
thinking that, oh, cigars and uh, premium cigars aren't part of smoke shops. Tell me. I mean, that's, me. that's another thing that we need to educate is that smoke shops and head shops are two different things. Don't be ashamed to ask for a head shop if you're looking for Kratom and CBD. Right. If you're looking for a smoke shop, you're looking for premium tobacco, like, limited cigarettes or premium tobacco and cigars. Whether that be pipes or cigars. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's a, like, nobody wants to say, I didn't mean to call you. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, Google pisses me off because... <clears throat> Well, the word cigar is found in the word cigarette right off the bat, and Google can't figure that out. You know what I mean? And it's like, I think Google should be smart enough to be like, cigar is not cigarettes. Thank you, sir. My, True. My, my producer tonight has been like, oh, Rob's out of a drink. Thank you. Sir. Yeah, I thought he was handing it to me. And you're out of a drink, too. Well, so I'm going to serve you possibly. first. But I tell you what, like, you're absolutely right. People will call up and be like, well, I just want smoke shop, but I want, you know, hemp uh, pipe dab tools. I want to be I, able to build an arc with hemp. Right. You, you, okay. You can get that from us, but you know what we can do? We can point we can you in the right direction. direct you to and the you next know what? alternative and you, smoking. And you know what? Five years from now, whenever they went to a bachelor party and smoked a cigar, they're going to say, you know what? I enjoyed the hell out of that. Where can I get one of those? I can only hope. And they're going to remember that you were hospitable, even though you weren't their, like, target demographic. And you sent them on a journey to help them. Yeah. And that's the thing. And people want to smoke and do whatever they want right you cannot tell them not to we they're don't gonna, care they're gonna yeah. we don't care we, they're gonna do what they want to do and all we can do at the leaf is say we are a cig- uh, premium cigar and pipe tobacco shop right what you want is probably found at such and such place and then we you want to go hang out with all the losers this is where they go we'll google it we'll we'll find the address we'll try to find the phone number we'll provide it to them and say there you go and they usually say thank you and, and how then many hang up. shops in any market regardless of what they're peddling a guy calls up and asks for something they don't sell they just go we don't carry that and that they hang up and then that's, that's it, it. Even though they're calling about something that's not in the realm of what you provide, yeah, you still say that's not our gig, but here's the guys that do that. Yeah. Dude, that's an example of how you handle your business. Well, and here's the thing. There's – I'm going to try to get on the camera here. There's – there are not cigar smokers or smokers, not smokers – then there are smokers. Well, you know what that right? sign is? That's too retarded. Numb. Yeah, that's that's too, <laughs> whatever you said. So on this side, of it, if I was a nun, <laughs> I would have a hard time with a ruler. <laughs> so the, the thing is, you have like the non-cigar smokers, and you have like people that smoke everything else, but not cigars. They're still in that stigma of smoking. Okay, and then there's the non-smokers. So, why wouldn't I help those folks? Like, right, even if they're, I don't, they're actually closer to us than the devil. I, I don't ever. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? No, I don't. I don't ever claim to carry every single thing that a smoker would ever want. But based on my position in the industry and in this particular town, do you town, carry rolling I, papers? Yes. Boom. But based on my position in the industry and my particular place in town, I know of places locally that could provide things that they are looking for. Right. So you're you're helping. And on you're that assisting. Level, on that level, it's still customer service. It's just we're not going to benefit from it. Right. But at the same time, they're going to think, man, those guys at the Leaf are badass. You know, I found exactly what I wanted. This uh, Canoe. 
coconut uh, flavored hemp bubble bro, gum, uh, bubble gum uh, hookah hey, paper let me, let me, shisha. Let me, let me ask you this. Have you ever smoked a hookah? Yes. And what did you think about that? It was the coolest smoke that I've ever had, like heat-wise. Like, like temperature-wise, you could just breathe it in like air. Let me tell you something. Tell me. A couple of weeks ago, yeah, penis. I sent a message to Dirty Fabian. <laughs> remember okay. Dirty Fabian? I remember Dirty Fabian. Yeah. So Dirty Fabian, when he left Drew Estate, Mm-hmm. Over a year ago, yep. His first interview out of Drew Estate was with Cigar Talk. Okay, yeah. We were that. very fortunate and very excited to have him mm-hmm. because when you want to talk about rock stars in the tobacco industry, Dirty Fabian is like the Tommy Lee. You know what I mean? If he had Pamela Anderson been over a Corvette, you would see like, okay, maybe I'm taking it too far. <laughs> Brian, clickety Brian, plow. Brian's doing the old kill him thing. Anyway, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <clears throat> so anyway, I messaged Dirty Fabian. A couple Thank you, of weeks. Brian. I went to seminary and I was getting uncomfortable. <laughs> so I, I just text messaged Dirty Fabian about yeah. two weeks ago and I said, hey man, what are you up to? And you know what he said? What did he say? hookahs hey i was like are you serious and he was like dude and i said why what about hookahs has you drawn in and he was like the amount of different complexities of tobacco with hookahs yeah i'm just enjoying the shit out of it and you know what it made me think of what's that I've never done that, but it makes me want to try that. You wanted to? I do. Have you tried it? Oh, yeah. And what did you think? It was uh, amazing. So, there is a lounge down in Brenham, Texas called Marigolds. Yeah. We did a show there. Yep. The lounge was like a 1957 to a 1965 vibe. Like, you felt like you walked into the Rat Pack era of Vegas. And he rolls all of his own cigars. He doesn't sell anyone else's cigars. And I was very skeptical. I was like, oh, here's a dude rolling his own cigars. They're going to be shit. Dude, they were freaking amazing. Yeah. And the thing about it is... He was like, I also do different blends, our own different blends of hookah tobacco. And he was telling me about why hookah tobacco was a certain color when you fired it up. Mm -hmm. But his wasn't that way because it was all organic. See, I I couldn't tell you how what color it was. We put the foil on there, put the coal on there, and let the coal do the business. So I'm thinking about trying out a hookah in the cigar talk studio oh and just seeing how it goes i've never done it before but dude why would you not try something dude that'd be awesome so here's the thing about hookah um you'll have to get at least a a four-prong hookah right you have at least host because we have me we have him we've got larry we've got other people yeah And most of the time, we actually have an audience for the show now. Correct. And all I can say is, if you haven't been to the studio when we're doing a show, it's a party. Yeah. I mean, is it a good time? Well, I I haven't been in a while, but... It hasn't been that long. Has it not been? (laughs) It feels like forever. Corey was our guest like three weeks ago. I don't even remember that. I guess that was a party. It was. <laughs> and so yeah, man. I, 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 it's like, oh, you know what? Hey. I don't see myself like transitioning from cigars to the hookah. Yeah. But I think it would be an experience to explore. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And um, you, if you bought a hookah 
Imagine all the things you could do with it. I don't know. I mean, I you, would imagine you, you could strap it to a lawnmower and like mow your lawn while enjoying a hookah. No, no. I was thinking like <laughs> I was thinking like that's not where you were going. Taking parts of cigars and then putting in the bowl and, and everybody all sharing it. Oh, like you take the first, you divide it into thirds. Yeah, you do the first third. Dude, that's a great idea. It. Yeah, coin it up so it burns even. Smoke it, and be like okay, and then second third, coin it up. Now the only thing you miss in that is the accumulation of the heat and the tobacco and the nicotine and the tar through the second and third third. But at the same time, you, you can all experience the same thing and talk about it. Right. I, I, I think that's a great idea. I hadn't thought about doing yeah. it that way. Also weed. Wow. Now, yeah. Cigar talk doesn't go beyond tobacco. I'm just going to say this. Yes. You can edit this out. Yes. Oklahoma State University. Which my nephew works for them. Their science team has derived a part of the cannabinoid plant, not the THC. Take the hallucinogenic high thing out of out. it. Okay. The cannab- cam- cannabinoid plant has elements and compounds that counteract COVID. Are you serious? I'm serious. Look it up. So the- I'm going to say right out the gate, you know, with my regular job. Yeah. I don't even think I could even do that. Like... It's just know, a matter of time know, before CBD is allowed. Like, I know. Well, CBD, even the oils yep. are not allowed. Right. So. Oh, I get I, it. I'm thinking that that might be like after I'm dead and gone. Here's what I'm thinking. Okay. You know why they're not allowed? No. Because current federal and governmental testing cannot distinguish the difference between cannabinoid oil and THC. Really? So once they develop a positive test saying, yes, you have cannabinoid oil, they have no they reason. have no reason but to tell you you have been smoking weed or you have THC in your system. And well, see, just because like they can't tell the difference? Yeah. I'm like you know, my daughter went to Australia and she came back and she was like, oh, this CBD oil is fantastic. And I'm like, get that out of here. Right, right. Like, I don't know what it does. I don't know what benefit you have from it, but get it out of here. See, and that's and that's the stigma between cannabinoid oil and THC. The mm. THC is the shit that gets you high and wants you, eat, wants you to eat all the fucking stale chips and shit around the house. The cannabinoid oil interacts with your body and helps with your cellular development. Huh? And that's what OSU has been developing hey, Big B, to determine if it's valid hey, against... Y'all see Big B here. He's leaving. He's leaving out early because he's a early. pussy. Hey, early. just want to let you know that we're talking about we're, we're talking about smoking weed and he's dicking out. Gotta go. He's All like, right. I gotta go smoke a bowl. Oh. Gotta go hey, gotta man. Go church. Hey, bro. Hey, hey. right here, bro. Thank you so much for not being on the show. Thank you so much for the way that you run the establishment of the leaf. I know, like, as an owner of a cigar shop, even though you shape and mold the way it's run, you also hold a respect for the name of the leaf and you want to do it justice. Yes. And I love you for that. Thank you. Hey, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this week's show. And until next time, keep smoking. Keep smoking.